The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light go. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 123 for like a bingo hall. My name is Gav, I'm sitting here with Two Fat Ladies, 88. A little bit of tumbleweeds then. Um, is that your bingo call, is it? Dan Bone, yeah. there's no number that rhymes. There is, no, there isn't really, but yes, Dan, me, the other half, and episode one, two, three, it's easy as ABC. It is indeed, it is indeed. So, Ray, me, ABC. Brilliant. Um, hope everybody in the world is happy and enjoying life and uh, the world as it is. This crazy little world we live in. Daniel Bone... It's a lot cooler today, isn't it? It is, is a lot cooler. We had to postpone uh, the episode from recording last week because we were in the middle of a heat wave, and uh, I just don't know. I don't think I could have done it. It's I just was, too hot. I couldn't concentrate on anything. Well, I couldn't have done it without a fan, and I can't have a fan on because then we can't record. Cause yeah, audio. exactly. Um, so it's a bit like... Because I have to have the window shut as well, so it's stuff like that. Um, and it was too hot, so I was like, dude, I'm calling it. Yeah, and my babies were a bit ill. It was, too, it was just too hot to do anything. So, yeah, here we go. We're a bit later than, than we planned, but whatever, we're here, which is the main thing. I sat in my pants um, on the sofa and I watched the big heat with Pete Cushion and Christopher Lee. did, he did. And I decided to watch Good movie. Cu- Cujo, um, which yeah. you haven't seen, you've revealed to me. No, no, um, it's because it's got like a, a child in peril and a dog. And I like dogs and I don't really like children in peril. And I've always been put off. Yeah, the kid is really good in it, and he does kind of get pull your heartstrings a bit. But yeah. it's, it's a great film, in my opinion. I know, I know, I should. I just always avoided it. It just, I, it's not even particularly set in a. I suppose it is a hot day, but it's just because the dogs got rabies and they're locked in the car for about twenty four hours, trying to get out, and the, it's just, it just feels so intense. Great, great movie. Love it. So that was that, and you watched The Big Heat in Your Pants. That's that's what you, they used to call you at school, wasn't it? The Big Heat in Your Pants. As I say, hey, look, here comes Big Heat in these pants. Big. I um, that's a really good movie, if you've never seen it. It's a good copy on YouTube. I just got, I liked it. It's like Peter Cushion just really hot sitting at a, par, a bar with Christopher Lee just being a bit arrogant, being a scientist type fella. Amicus. Uh, it's a good movie. It amicus? Yeah, it's Amicus. It's, it, yeah, and it's that. directed by Terence Fisher, who directed a lot of the uh, Hammer films, like the traditional yeah. Dracula, etc. Um, good movie, if you've never seen it. On, on UK YouTube, I don't know elsewhere in the world I, uh, if it's on YouTube. I discovered it about a year or two ago. It was on the UK Horror Channel. Um, I saw the two names. Yeah, it, can't go wrong, can you? And I thought, press record on that. And a couple of weeks later, I watched it and thought, wow, I've never seen this. It's it really good. It feels just like a hammer. And that's because I think Terence Fisher as well, and the score, and the colour, and the... just really does. But yeah, Amicus. Yeah, good stuff. Amicus, but good. We should probably look at Amicus for an episode sometime and pick a couple of movies to, to cover for the main ones or yeah or we just did mini reviews and just did like a, a, a amicus collection of films or something maybe do something yeah, different definitely coolio okay. coolio uh, what, watched... what have you been up to well oh okay what have i been up to well i've got some news it's not another baby is it two babies <laughs> another two babies no it's not uh, I've got some news when I say the word werewolf or lycanthrope to you Gav yes who do you immediately think of in our circle of podcasting of podcasting people in the world uh, Jamie exactly exactly right now is the time she is a werewolf lover as I am and um, yes. I, I always I do always think of Jamie sometimes when I'm watching a werewolf movie. Not that I think you look like a werewolf, Jamie. It's just because you <laughs> like like uh, uh, werewolves. 
She does. And we appeared on her show, Liking It. Get it, guys? Lycanthropy. Liking yep. It. Yep. Discussing uh, Big, ba- um, Big Bad Moon. Yes. That wasn't the name of it, was it? Was I like that. Remember, remember that movie? That's good, the one, the old silver silver uh, little trailer the, that the dude, yeah. the brother, stayed in. Bad Moon Rising, I think it was called. I remember that really good Big bit Bad when Moon. the dog goes towards the... I remember really clearly, actually. The dog goes towards the trailer and he's uh, sniffing and follows him into the woods. Do you remember that bit? He, I do, and I also remember that yeah. the dog is a bit of a Jackie Chan in it as well because he kind of escapes from the dog home and stuff. But anyway, the reason I bring this up, the reason I bring up Jamie, our lovely friend... Co- uh, colleague, I guess, if you will, in podcasting, uh, also patron, just everything. She she is everything. OG podcaster. She is. We can't praise her enough. Well, the reason I bring this up is because she sent me a screenshot of her new license plate <gasps> over over in Michigan, right, where she lives. And Gab, now is the time for you to look at what I've sent you. Okay, uh, where and have I you sent it? Sent it to you via the old Facebook oh, Michigan, Messenger. Yeah. So here we go, guys. That is her number plate, her license plate, right there. I've got to. Oh my god! No, that can't be. No, it really is because she said it to me uh, and Kate Pollock, and we were like, "Hang on, is this real?" She's like, "Yep, hundred percent." So, guys, her license plate is werewolf, but without one of the e's. So it's W E R W O L F. And that is how fucking cool oh, Jamie J. God. Simmons is. But even better, like the number plates, like the title of it and the names over, uh, underlaid underneath it is a bridge with like a sunset and like a, yeah. the water. So it's almost like a fucking, like a beginning of a movie. It does look like, it looks like <laughs> a poster, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a film, so it's Jamie, great. you're just too cool for school. That's what I said. I said to her, you are the fucking coolest and I'm giving you a shout out for this on, on the next episode. Mega props. So there we go, Jamie. <laughs> I've never shout. ever said mega props about anybody. So there you go. It sounds like a really weird transformer. Mega, mega, <laughs> mega props transform. <laughs> what if it's mega pops? It's like a cereal transformer. Oh, or just a breakfast cereal called mega pops. Rice crispy, it transforms. <laughs> into into frosties. Um, no. Well, we're well, moving from incredible werewolf m- news. On to some sad news. Related to last episode, in fact, we covered Hansel and Gretel in the last episode, yeah. starring the, the legendary David Warner, who, sadly, today as we record, yeah. we find out he passed away at the age of 80 from a cancer-related illness. Yeah, bless him. Um, I'd forgotten all about it. He had a little cameo on screen, too, where he sits and t- tells uh, Sydney, like, you can do this, you've got the power, and gives her, like, a motivational speech, which helps her through the movie. Yeah, he's a bit of a legend. Uh, Omen, so good. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Use. I don't remember that. Yeah, the Omen, Tron, obviously. Uh, apparently Company uh, of Wolves, but I haven't seen that for many years. It's Titanic. The werewolves. Yeah, Titanic. And obviously Hansel and Gretel, as we covered in our last episode. Uh, many, 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 many more films. Um, Waxwork. How can we forget he's in Waxwork? That's oh, was he? With yeah. um, Zach. Zach Graf whatever his name from Gremlins Gremlins man Zach Gremlins I used to have those two on video but I sold them um, yeah so our thoughts are with his family he's a legend uh, was a legend is a legend and he was 80 and he's had a great career and a great life yeah uh, rest in peace yeah so I just wanted to mention that we haven't done one of those for a while but uh, yeah you know remember when we had that sort of period in, in where we thought the world was just shit as it was and then all loads of people started dying I know I, st- I started wrapping <laughs> like, up what the um, fuck I started wrapping John Carpenter up in cotton wool because I was worried. Yeah, it was it was that period where just life is so shit and everything's going on. So there's a tsunami over there. There's an earthquake over there. There's a pandemic here. There's a war there. Every celebrity you, you like dying. Yeah. Like, what Pr- the fuck? Pr- I think Prince and David Bowie died in the same month that year, whatever year that was. It's like, what the fuck's going on? Mm. Um, but so, yes, yeah, so- we haven't. So, you know, touch wood or whatever. <laughs> The life wood. I don't know what that is. Um, I know what the life wood is. <laughs> Rub the bark of the life wood, but don't get Rub. a splinter. Rub my bark. Rub my rough bark. Um, uh, uh, luckily, touch wood. We've not had many of the old celebrity deaths sort of thing of recently, or you know, not the not the right celebrities anyway. We're still waiting on uh, confirmation of 
Harvey Weinstein. No, I'm joking. We can't wish the people dead. That's it's not, not really what a celebrity. Well, if he's a celebrity, for this is a very wrong reason, isn't it? Really. <laughs> What celebrity paedophiles um, what have I been watching um, I went to the cinema with my ma the other night and I didn't know if I'd catch it um, I grew up on on, on my hands there was a lot of fall money I grew up on uh, Elvis Presley what? Elvis Presley okay. um, I grew up on Elvis and I uh, really want to take my mum to watch the movie um, and we finally got a chance to go and that was fucking amazing I could have it was like almost three hours and I could have sat there for six hours seven hours um because his story, his life is, is his story is so intricate, they couldn't even really get into it so much. Really, um, it was like oh, then this happens and that happens. I'd have loved to have seen more. I'd like to have seen more of the music, like him figuring his voice out and getting into all that. So it was so much to put in that yeah, it was just little bits here and there. Here he was. He one day just heard gospel and was just like, oh my god, this is amazing. And he lived amongst black community and took in all that richness of all the uh, uh, culture, music and the rhythms and all that stuff and just turned it around as a white person and moved his hips sexy, sexually. And, um, he sexually moved those hips, didn't he? Yeah, and unfortunately, because of that reason and because, because of uh, how ridiculous the racism was, um, he he. It was a case of right. You're going to go to prison, or you're going to go to in the into Germany for two years as in the army to clean your act up to look better, because we don't want you moving your hips and letting girls get all excited. What? Yeah. Like different life, times. Gav. Life was so times. little then, unless that that was such a big important thing. It's like, come on, <laughs> we're here once, and it's a shame because the Elvis went through these stages, and the first stage, that original stage where he came out, I love that. I love the rawness of that. It's like when bands come out and they're early raw shit, and you're like, man, that's fucking. That's just raw talent. There's no money involved. There's no stardom. There's no fame. There's no nothing. It's literally. There's no pressure. It's just them and just going, I love doing this. I am born to fucking make music and I'm going to They just it. want to show off, don't they? And That's... I wish that it had been able to stay like that. But he's like, no, you can go to the army. Then he came back a bit cleaner and then he went to a different type of Elvis. He did get back to it a bit, but not like the way he was. And it's a shame. Um, but yeah, the movie's amazing. Really, really good. Um, if you like Elvis, definitely watch it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and I think even if you don't, you'll be entertained from everyone's. Really, I haven't seen really, it, but everyone tells me it's uh, really well made. As a uh, yeah, as a uh, filmmaker, um, incredible movie. Just one thing which straight away got me. I was watching. It, I was going. This editing is absolutely phenomenal. 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 It was really, really good. So, yeah, I recommend watching that film, actually. And I'm glad I saw it in the cinema, so it's loud as fuck. Because it's, I literally had goosebumps at times when they were like, Whoa! It's just like, oh, my God. You know, I even had a little tear towards the end as well. You know? But the big question is, did your mum like it? I kept sneakily looking over to my mum. And it was a packed cinema. And we had four women in front of us. But one of them kept coughing all the way through. Decided they'd like to talk all the way through. Put bags of sweets up in the air to move along with their friends. So Jesus fuck, what is this with cinema on me? Even my mum moaned about it. She said, if I went to shop, I was going to tell him to shut up. I was like, good, mum, that must be where I get it from. Um, <laughs> um, she loved it. Yeah, she really, really loved it. She texted me the next day saying, thank you very much, Gavin, because she calls me Gavin, um, for taking me last night. I can't stop thinking about that movie, Kiss. Oh, Yeah. Aww, so she loved lovely. it, and I was really happy I could take her to it because she wouldn't have gone to see it in a cinema, possibly. She does go to cinema, but she wouldn't have gone to a good cinema. She'd gone to like the local town club thing where a load of people sit on really shit chairs and watch a movie eight months after it's come out oh um yeah great movie uh, what it, a good son you are do you like elvis <laughs> hey he's all right i was never really he never really was in my house as a kid oh yeah i grew up on it um we grew up on uh, reggae really? country, yeah country reggae I did, country. I did a bit of country motown um and my dad was into rock it's quite eclectic but what the one be the Beatles and Elvis were two of the bigger bands that just never... My parents never played. Elvis um, all the time. But, but I do, and Buddy Holly. I do, you know, he's, he wrote some great songs. And 
I know I fucking know. I know all the words. Loads of Buddy Holly songs. Oh, I love Buddy Holly. My dad loved Buddy Holly so much. That was it. My dad loved other bands that were similar to Elvis enough that he didn't listen to Elvis. So uh, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey. Uh, hey, uh, hey, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, 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 Anyway, <laughs> the listeners don't want to hear our bad singing. They want to hear singing, me. Us in unison singing Buddy Holly. What the fuck is this shit? We want we bloody even, horror, not buddy said, horror, Holly. Listen, before before we talk about uh, the other films we've been watching, we probably should tell everybody, although they've clicked the thumbnail and they know what this is, we haven't even said what the fuck we're doing in this episode, have we? Because no. we're, we're too excited, as always, like two little boys running around. <laughs> we are covering... We're going to it's Italy, aren't we? Yes, and we are covering uh, two very loved... Uh, especially the first one, but they're, they're both got a lot of love behind them. Uh, movies in a series. Uh, there were other, uh, roughly, there was a three, four, and a five, I think. But we're only going to be covering the first two. And we're looking at Demons, or Demoni, and Demon 2. Demons 2, both directed by Lamberto Bava. Son of the amazing Mario. Not, not, yeah. not Mario! Um, it, uh, but uh, Mario Barber, Mario who we Barber. covered about six years ago in our Mario Barber special. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. And produced uh, by Dario Argento, we should say. Yeah, and I actually, when I was a more naive uh, film enthusiast, I thought for many couple of years it was directed by him, but obviously it's not. Um, but yeah, so really excited to be talking about those two. Uh, it's been a long time coming to chat about, especially Demons 1, and we've got to chuck in Demons 2 with Sally's party uh, for that one. And we also, of course, we have Bill Murray on standby. Bill, you ready over there? Mm. He's given us a very... He's given us a nod. He's very tired. He doesn't, look, ha- he doesn't look happy. He's tired from the heat. He um, Just sit and relax. Yeah. He's ready to introduce World of the Strange for no, us. No, don't as well. do that. You can't do that. I know it's only a podcast they can't see, but you can't do it because we can see and it. It's going to put us off. Yeah. Dirty, dirty yeah. fucker. It's very exciting. He's very excited because he's in the new Ant Man film that just got released, uh, the traders for Is the week he? on the weekend. Yeah, so well, he's very excited about that. Well done, Bill. I know. Finally made it into the Marvel films. Well done, Billy. So, yes, yeah, so we've got Demons, Demons 2, World of the Strange. And I just wanted to let everybody know what the episode was going to be about before we start talking nonsense. So, I watched a film which is quite an old one, but I know you said it gave you a bit of trauma. And actually, a few people have mentioned a bit of trauma, and I haven't seen it since I was a kid. And that's The Sword and the Sorcerer from 1982. Yeah, I've not seen it since I was a kid. I remember, not to interrupt, but I'll get in there before you start talking about it. I uh, used to be Saturday nights, about 10 ish, BBC One, or I think it's BBC One, don't think it's BBC Two, I think it's BBC One, or 10, 10 30 off the news sort of thing. Uh, they'd occasionally have like one of these weird sort of fantasy movies and they were 18 rated my parents would be like yeah alright see you later like after night and just leave me there and I remember watching this one and I haven't seen it since and it freaked me out now I'd probably watch it now and be like Pfft. actually I think you would probably still I was incredibly impressed by the special effects all oh, practical okay. there's a guy at the end who pulls all his skin off to reveal that he's a demon and I'm like how did they do that in 982 that looks really good actually um, well 82 you had to think I'm out I mean, my story with that is that my mum and dad, I think, let me rent it because although it said it was an 18, it looked like it was just going to be a He-Man cartoon or something. But obviously, like, they went out of the room and left me to watch it. There's tits, there's violence, there's skin being ripped off. you you say it's 18, you you rented it. So for us, back in the day, it was like uh, about two years to rent also. Maybe you rented about 84? Probably uh, 84, 85, maybe a little bit later. So uh, So I probably would have been about eight. I reckon eight or nine, and I watched it on TV, which is generally like fucking three years later. That was normally it was every one. It was like one year later we'd get a cinema release, another year later we'd get a video, then the third year you get TV. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, I watched it on TV. So we were definitely probably less than ten years old when we saw this film. Yeah, there. I might have been getting on to ten, but I, no, more likely like eight or nine. Yeah, but it's a, it's a hidden gem, and uh, I just I'll check I, it again. Would you see it? It's on Prime. Uh, I think I rented it on Prime. Oh, okay, cool. And All I right. think it's on YouTube, but it wasn't a very good copy, so I ended up saying to Alice, fuck it, I'm paying £2.50 to rent this because it's a bit of a dark copy on YouTube. Um, but I won't dwell on it too long because it's an old film. No one wants to hear us talk about old films. But if you like Beastmaster and all People those kind of old ones... People just tuned in for us to review two old films. Oh, that's true. <laughs> 
Um, uh, was it good though? Would you give it a thumbs up? Yeah, definitely would. Oh, cool, wicked. Oh, well, I might have to check it out again because it really freaked me out and it might and, take me back to my nightmares as a child. And talking of sword and sorcery, and myself. swinging your big weapons around. Um, swinging my big weapon. I also had a quick cinema trip on my own. My big chopper. To watch my big chopper starring. Oh, no, sorry. Thor Love and Thunder. Imagine if it was a movie called My Big Chopper. It probably is, Gav. Google it. Uh, yes, I watched Thor 4, uh, aka Thor Love and Thunder. So, because I recently, I told you I'd watched that. I, I said to you, I picked up a Thor movie I'm going to watch because it looked kind of cool. I like the front cover and stuff, and I read like it was done by someone quite funny in his person that did what we do in the show. Yeah, he so did I watched well. that recently, and I wanted just to tell the world out there because I know I always come across as a bit of a moaner to the Marvel world. I really enjoyed it. Kept the DVD, and we'll watch it again. And even Leonard Saren said, Jeff Goldblum's in it. You like Jeff yeah, Goldblum? And funny, I think you actually find it's funny, and you could watch it as a standalone if you wanted to. Yeah. Because it, it plays oh, you can't, like I that. think you can with any of the Marvel films. Um, I, I, don't, say, I, I feel threatened <laughs> by trying to do that by them, but this one I didn't. So how's this new one though? Because obviously it kind of it follows on, uh, and it's got a lot of extra characters in there. There's a lot of world building still for the other films, but okay. overall it's just a silly, fun film. Same director, Taika Waititi, and yeah. Chris Hemsworth. Natalie Portman becomes the Thor in this one for a while, and. Good stuff. I enjoyed it on my own in the he cinema. He's pinched, isn't he? He's ridiculous. His arms are about the size of my waist. It's, it's insane. Absolutely insane. So I just wanted to talk about my cinema trip there. So that was that. Um, and how was that? Did people talk over it and eat food? No, because I went at 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh. Um, and it was a really hot day. And I was really pleased to be sat in an air-conditioned cinema at 10 o'clock in the morning. I know. I did say to my mum, I was like, why didn't... Because I rang her up when it was like heat waves, saying, are you guys OK? Are you doing all right? You know, because they're getting on. And then I said to my mum, I was like, why the fuck didn't... Well, I didn't say that, fuck. I took that. <laughs> why didn't Don't we, swear to you, mum. Why didn't we go to the cinema when it was really hot the other day and sit for three hours in aircon? The worst thing is, when I came out of the cinema, Should I had them. a... I had a missed call from the children's nursery. Oh, no. And I phoned them up and they said, Hi, they both got temperatures. Can you collect them? For fuck's sake, I was going to go home and have a beer and just chill out. No, you can't when your dad. You're not allowed to. <laughs> You're literally on call 24-7. So I said, Sorry, you've got the wrong number. <laughs> and I hung up. <laughs> and went to the pub. I went to the pub on my own. Um, when I circle back around, if I may, to werewolves... No. Because I did watch one of my one of the best werewolf films I've seen. Oh, new I werewolf films I've seen. This. I have seen it and I can't really remember it. Okay, so it's a film called Where W E R. Is this the one where it's a police interrogation? Yes, yes. So I still remember. I, I'm, yeah, I was like, yeah. So there's there's a it's about twenty percent pound footage film in that they f uh, that a family gets slaughtered on a camping trip in Europe and. Um, the guy they arrest a guy who's really tall and really no. hairy and it, doesn't really say a lot english spoken or is it a foreign yeah it's english it's okay. english but they speak french in it a lot i think it's french what uh, you okay. tell me? uh as well but with subtitles because it's like it's a so it's a dual language film but they arrest this guy who's really tall and really hairy and he's really strong and intimidating and it's all just like is he a werewolf what is he and then it just just Don't spoil halfway. It. I'm not going to. I mean, it's 2013, um, so it's a lot quite old now. But it, I was chatting to Jamie about it after she sent me the license plate picture. Of me and her were talking about werewolf films, as we often do. And um, I told her I'd seen it. She said, "Yeah, I watched it myself." And there was two scenes in it which gave her goosebumps, exactly the same as me. Very sort of fist pumping. What have I just seen? So, for anybody who wants a good werewolf movie, because we always say, Gav and I say, that there aren't enough of them good ones out there. So, go go watch Where, W-E-R, just Where is the name of it. It's 2013. Again, it's on Prime. I rented it for about £2.49 by the looks of it. Um, fucking highly recommended it, and I gave it 7.5 out of 10. Really loved it. One of the best modern werewolf films I've seen. And I'll leave it there. Oh, I'll have to watch it again. Now, if I may, go from that to one of the worst films I've seen. Blimey, what's that then? Because you've, called... you've seen some bad movies. Is it, is it a shark it film? It is, it is, yep. It's called Noah's Shark. I think that is amazing in itself. You've got to give it at least a couple of points for that. I gave it one out of ten. 
It's just the name. Let me give you the synopsis. A fame-seeking televangelist and his film crew set out to find the fabled Noah's Ark, but they discover that it's guarded by both an ancient curse and a prehistoric great white shark. That's a good idea. You could... You can make that all right, actually. Go to find, we're like, we're gonna actually find Noah's Ark. We reckon there's a India James type, yeah, and and then find out there's actually a shark protects it, and it is underwater. Obviously, so that's pretty. That's a that's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, but unfortunately, it was made on a budget I'd say of about a thousand dollars. Um, what was the shark then? Really, really, really bad CGI, like, like PlayStation One quality. CGI and puppetry. If, this is the thing. It'd be easier just to play the Jaws game of just not really show anything. It'd be a lot easier to and cheaper and quicker. Just get it in camera and just don't well, show much. Use suspense. That was the worst thing about it is that they didn't show much of the shot. Most of the story was about these guys having a go at each other and who uh, oh where is the where's the arc i know where the arc is you mean they didn't show scenes of the supposed shark because that's what not, i mean you have to show the shark but have scenes obviously of in peril and tension like jaws i'm not even gonna worry i'm not even gonna talk about it for any longer it's 2021 <laughs> it's about to have a conversation I, with you. I love shark shit shark films as you know but this one was probably the bottom of the barrel when it comes to them. I've seen and I've seen Shark Exorcist, Shark in Stein, um, Shark Wolf. You know, all of, I've seen all of them. You don't even smoke weed. I don't even know how you do it. Don't know. I, I'm going to get you a T-shirt though that says "I love shit shark films." Please. Big, I, I I, big massive heart. Shit shark films. I was wearing my Jules T-shirt the other day that Alice bought me when she got drunk the other night and just decided to buy me a Jules T-shirt online. Is it, is, oh, not the white ones in Primark at the moment? No, no. I've seen loads of kids wandering around with shark <laughs> Jules T-shirts on at the moment. And uh, and on the same day, on one day I was wearing it last week, I had three different strangers compliment me on my shirt. Everybody loves Jules. This, this guy knocked on my door and gave me, aggressively gave me a parcel that had accidentally been delivered to his house. <laughs> said this was in my back garden i don't know what amazon prime think they're doing and i said all right well thanks very much and then his wife went i love your t-shirt that's my favorite film of all time they are they really, so angry. really uh, uh what is that passive aggressive i don't know what they were this then. is your parcel i'm bringing round for you okay but, thank you yeah i got a lot of compliments good t-shirt okay thanks the worst one though was I was in the park with the babies feeding the ducks and this lady came up to me and she had a baby and she started feeding the ducks next to me and she started chatting to me and then she went, I'm Claire and I went, okay, oh, I'm Dan and she went, this is Robin, my little girl and I said, oh, lovely to meet you, this is Jack and Edith and then she just wanted to be my best friend and then she went, well, I'll have to look for you now whenever I come in here, Dan, to feed the birds. Uh, make sure you're always wearing your Jules t-shirt. I'll look out for you, always wearing your Jules t-shirt. And I just thought, fuck it, she's going to kill me, I think. I'm going to get out of there. You do have them in there, Bristol. It, but it's like cigarette smokers and dog walkers. You just They just seem to like want to talk to you. Yeah. Um, I always have conversations when I'm out with beans, just with other dog walkers about dogs. I remember we were walking beans when he was little, and that guy came up to us and said, "Would you sell your dog to me?" Do you remember that? Yeah, and that's when <laughs> I thought that it was good. It was good to get nicked. Yeah. But what the fuck? <laughs> no, yeah. we really just got him. <laughs> yeah, piss off. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe she, maybe she just kidnapped the child and uh, used it as a ruse to uh, talk to other potential uh, kidnappees. Potentially, maybe. Yeah. Start, well, I start a little relationship with you down at the pond. A little kinky relationship, a duck feeding kinky relationship. At the I'll pond. feed. I'll feed her a duck for her. Don't you say that? Come on. Don't you say that? Don't you say that? Don't you say that? Come on. Now, talking of shit films and shit things, the last couple of things to mention are related to that subject of things being shit, and they're, they're related to two trailers that have dropped in the horror world. I um, think how you'd feed her a duck now. Yeah, go on. So the first trailer to discuss is Halloween Dies. Oh, I've not. Uh, oh no, I think I did watch the trailer for it. I, I've kind of lost interest. Yeah, I watched it and I thought this is an action film. 
Uh, probably. And and you said this last time. You said this about the middle one, the second one. You said it's too. They've met, they've turned him into John Wick, and 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 I watched it. I was quite late to the game with that one, and I watched it, and I thought actually, Gab's right. This is too much of an action film to be. It's not a horror film anymore. It's more action. And this new trailer, it's just like it might as well just be like. Um, one woman, you know, she's like suited up. She's like, come get me, motherfucker. And she actually says that line in the trailer. And it's uh, like Mike Myers, uh, uh, not the actual actor. The, Michael Myers. Michael Myers. <laughs> he, he, um, he was a slow, plodding shape who occasionally would stab people and sort of slid along like a fucking zombie. He's a bit, he's been in a mental institute for many years. I know he's probably many, angry. Many years, many years. But, uh, uh but he's just, you know, he's a, a psychiatric ward. I shouldn't say mental state. Possible. N- Nut house, I think, is the... <laughs> bonkers. Bonkers, bonkers bar. Battery. Um, uh, bonkers barn. Um, wow. Um, and he wasn't that. He never was that. If you watch the first movie, there he is now. And they're trying to put this on as, like, the new movies following on from that first one. But he never was that person. He was just quite... Oh, I'm going to stab people. Just cock me head and look at them. Oh, I've stabbed you. Oh, I'm going to wander off now and put up... A gravestone in the bloody cupboard and, and bed and shit. I was, uh, by the way, my <coughs> favourite ter- term for the nut house is Bo Ransel often would call it a, the booby hatch. It's where they put the boobies in the booby hatch. Um, I, what, my, when I tapped out on this trailer was when I saw when she said the line, "Come get me, motherfucker." I just thought. If this was like a even an alien movie, I could get Sigourney Weaver or Linda Hamilton saying that in a Terminator movie. But this is, and I love Jamie Lee Curtis, and it, I do it, love the, it was the, the, really the Halloween timid movies. But babysitter who was d- d- definitely a nerd and like a virgin and everything innocent about her—that was who she was. I understand they might have got hardened by the alcohol and the, the just this paranoia of Michael coming to get her all the time, and it must have been very shocking. But I don't know. I don't know. Are you going to say? Are you going to say monsters as well? Yeah. So that was the other one. So that, that that's it. So you haven't watched Halloween. <laughs> Go watch. You watch it. If you guys let us know what you think on our Facebook page, I'm not really going to. I will watch it, but I'm not going to rush to see it. But the one I am probably not going to fucking watch, and I'm probably going to avoid it. And I love the mon- monsters, and I love the Adams family. But this trailer for this uh, Rob Zombie monsters is it? A, is it a movie or a TV show? It's a movie, isn't it? It's a movie set before uh, the monsters. So, so um, I think it's a story possibly of Lily meeting Herman. Well, it's a story. It's, it's Herman being built. You haven't so you, got Eddie. Like it's that. Herman's backstory of him being built, created, uh, okay. and then he meets Lily uh, and Grandpa's in it as well. well. I thought Grandpa created Herman for Lily. Well, I mean, I guess they probably will find that out in the. Um, it's going straight to Netflix, so I guess Universal have probably been like, "Yeah, this isn't going to make no money. This is quite going to be embarrassing." Uh, Rob's got to do what he wanted to do. Old Robert, has got to do what. Well, he wants we said to do. this when, when he announced the monsters, and we always slate him. So here we are, guys. Welcome to the Rob Zombie. Uh, moment, five minutes of Which hating. I never thought would happen when I after watched House of House Corpses and I listened to his music. I thought, oh my god, like I did with Eli Roth. But but when they announced um, he's making the monsters, me and Gav joked, probably get Sherry Moon in there as uh, Lily. What thing he did. Is, the thing is, though, is that we joked it, but I think everybody knew, would have known he's good. It's just the best. It's just a bit weird. I understand. It's nice to have your film family. It's nice to recast the same members because you know how to work with each other. And many, many, many directors do. Mark Scorsese has done it multiple times with yeah. people. You know, you do that. But I don't know. It seems very, very self centered and very, very like, I don't really care about any of you. I want to make this movie. I'm going to do it. But he gets away with it and people give him the money to do it. So what, who are we to say anything? He's doing what he wants to do. It's just a shame he can't actually look a little bit outside the box and because he's written this as well and it's like get someone else to write the films if, and and it's it's in color i thought it might be black and white as well but it's actually going to be in, in and it's not just color it's oh, like he, uh, he wanted it to be in black and white universal wouldn't let him well it's very uh, bright color well if you ever seen a colorized uh monsters film i have yeah oh, okay cool yeah herman being green etc so I read a funny review of the trailer. Somebody, not a review, but somebody just put underneath it on Twitter or something. I'm getting real uh, vibes of the Flintstones, uh, Viva Rock Vegas, which was the terrible sequel to that Flintstones movie that came out in the early nineties, which I, is really I camp, never knew colourful. It was a sequel. Oh. Yeah. So 
and it is like that. It's like one of those Flintstones movies you would have got back in those days. It almost know. does look like a bit of a joke. It does. It looks like a piss take, doesn't it? It looks it like someone's like having a, a bit sketch, of a joke. A sketch show sketch. Like a comedy yeah. show sketch. Just like, oh, let's do a comedy sketch monster. But it's like, no, that's the movie. Like, what? So, I... Fuck knows. Honestly, fuck knows. I don't know how I he gets away to watch that. I don't know if Rob Zombie's sucking dick of executives or what. I don't understand how he gets away with it. But he he is... is he always gets the same thing. He's got that die-hard fan, army fan. There's going to be... It might be one of our listeners. Die-hard Rob Zombie fan who will... Like, almost like a Trump supporter. Will will not say you're it, comparing take... Rob Zombie to Donald Trump. Well, they 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 will not <laughs> they will not look at him. He will never do anything wrong. Is what I'm saying. I know I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, totally. Um, I watched season two and three because I hadn't seen them of Eli Roth's History of Horror. And uh... yes, I've seen season three because um, uh, it came on Shudder. I stopped Shudder again because I got bored of it once again. Um, but they never had season two, which seems weird. Well, Rob Zombie's on on there, but he doesn't barely say anything. He just sits at a table with uh, Greg Nicotero and um, Eli Roth, and those two are having a great conversation, and Rob Zombie's just sort of staring at them. He's probably asleep, to be honest. He's got his sunglasses on, and he's just sort of sat there. He, he's getting on a bit. What are you even doing at this table, Rob? Fuck off. Um, so, yeah, the Munsters doesn't look great, neither does Halloween. I did see on a similar vein, I did see a teaser trailer for... And now, this should this should work if it goes right. Tim Burton has done a Wednesday... Wednesday Adams, that is. A Wednesday TV show. Drop in at the same time. Yeah, so that looks good. Apparently, I heard Christina Ricci might even be in it as a cameo or something I'm not sure but it's about Wednesday Adams I'd rather he'd have done a TV sh- like a, a, an Adams Family TV show but apparently he's concentrated all on Wednesday fine okay that's cool but that works because his style when I think of him Tim Burton I think of black and white that kind of thing as in the colour he, he's got his style type. and he knows what he's doing and it's like Rob Zombie Rob Zombie's got his style um, it's really shit though no, Rob Zombie style's amazing like uh, uh, the 70s look he's got but obviously he's not doing that with this so much it's not the grain film look um, like he does because he uh, Rob Zombie colour wise and the film stock and the way his movies look and the period of costumes of, of the time and the, the sets and stuff are amazing it's just his writing so. he's like the Tommy Wiseau of horror isn't he is he just throws all the money at it makes this weird film he, that only he wants to make you and say then... that but he's never been making movies with a lot of money he had crowdfund uh, free from 31 31 and you know it's not it's not a huge amount of money in his films but it's, i i think he does really well in what he, he's getting across but it's just always the, when it comes down to the core of it writing writing of the film the story yeah. uh, any, you could shoot a movie on any fucking camera if the story isn't like good you're straight away going oh my god this story's amazing i want to know what's happening regardless of what camera it's shot on um so yeah if the writing's bad the film's bad. Then the writing's on the wall. You can have well, a film which is written really bad, but still be stylistically incredible, and you can go, that looks really great, but there's no substance. You just walk away from it, not remembering it, not thinking about it for the next day. Elvis movie, I came around, what you think about it next I know that's obviously based on a true life, so that's a very good story. Um, but the next day, I thought about the movie loads. Yeah, and I it, love that. That's what you want in a film. I love that. And actually, that brings me nicely to my final film to talk about, which ends the intro on a bit of a high uh have you got any others though you wanted to discuss before we i've been watching shit but like i, I never sort of jotted down elvis was one of the highlights for me it's um, not horror but you know it's, it's a highlight uh before i talk about this film then i'll just quickly say uh there's a little poster that's been released online hasn't there gav do you want to push a little bit more about that uh, yeah, uh, like right this a, a second uh, i'm exporting a colored version of um tape free um, the short film that we've been making. Um, ben, who shot it for us, who's our, uh, pretty much our art department now, has banged out a poster. It's a really great poster. It's a lovely poster. Very yeah, nice. And he sort of finished it yesterday. Um, and for our short film, so we, we just got it done. We're going to need to get it in for the next couple of days. It's got to be. It's the last submittance to the HP Lovecraft Festival in Portland, Oregon, who we've had two films play at, and they like they like us yeah I, I went on a director's panel there when they did an online festival yeah um because i've never been able to get out there um so we hopefully get into there and hopefully they'll be like yeah cool it's very lovecraft it's i shot it in this flat right here literally right here um <laughs> um yeah it's really good it's about a dude a journalist um in set in 1989 and this journalist has got this old got 
collected some reels from a reels reel machine and um, he's listening to an old seance from many moons ago and um, he, he's trying to look into the mystery of a man that went missing and they were trying to bring this man back in the seance tapes so he's just listening to them to see what's going on and then spooky things start happening in the flat so yeah, and there's Sherry, Sherry Moon is not in it at no, all. No, Sherry guys. Moon's in it. Yeah, she she is the, <laughs> she is the man journalist. <laughs> no, our, our our friend Mark is that, and he play he's really good in it. Like it's really nice to. Like, it's the first time I've ever felt I've really directed something. I can really say that I've really directed it after all these like, years of directed things. But I really sort of got in there with Mark, and we really got what we wanted. It was, it was good exciting stuff well thanks for, for mentioning that uh the last thing that i the last film i wanted to watch because we've talked about some pooey things but now it's time for me to talk about a film which i rediscovered and i've always known it was a great movie uh, it's from 19 uh, it's from 2001 and my wife said to me because it's our wedding it's coming up to our third our wedding anniversary so we've been trying to like hang out on evenings together and do nice things impossible. when the baby impossible impossible you've got children you've got babies impossible. we've got about four hours from when they go down to sleep about seven till one of them wakes up from milk about 11 or 12 so we have a few hours to drink as much as we can <laughs> <It's> not... right <laughs> go 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 <laughs> <laughs> but she did say to me oh that's just come up on netflix can we sit down and watch the others together and i said oh so we got a bottle of red wine and we sat and we watched the others together the other night nicole kidman yeah i saw, uh, I saw not long ago i watched it with uh, jay actually and it holds up so well it's such a, a yeah, beautiful yeah. gothic almost hammer at times film um and uh, yeah, I, I fell in love with it all over again i, I haven't seen it for about 10 years set in uh, world war Two. Um, it's one of the world wars. I think it's World War One. Yeah, I think it's World War One. Um, yeah, sat on a Jersey, the Channel Island of Jersey, just off the UK. I've been to Jersey many, many times as a child. All the, loads of times for some reason. Don't know why. And did you see a ghostly Christopher Eccleston trudging through the? No, I did go, They've got some old artsy tunnels there. Um, so I've been in them and that. Mm. Well, if you haven't seen it for a while, guys, or if you've never seen it. I'll give a little shout out to the others because Nicole Kidman is phenomenal in it. I, I don't actually really mind her too much as an actress. So I forget that she's actually a really good. There's a reason she's a name, isn't there? She's a fucking good actress or actor, as, I, as they say now. But uh, yeah, the others. It's on UK Netflix, 2001. Brilliant movie. I might want to. Might, might push for us to cover that sometime, Gav. If we can pair it up with something Another like Haunted the House woman, movie. woman in Black or something like that. Um, um, yeah, maybe we'll have a little discussion about haunted house films. Yeah, I know we've we uh, we've sort of we've uh, we, we have covered it. We covered the haunting and the house and haunted hill, but it's a great genre. But we can go back because there's others and there's been Change, be, the changeling. Oh man, the changeling and the others. Changing oh. up. That's my favourite of the haunted house films. George H. Scott. It's great. I've just, yeah, I, I never saw it until about about two or three years ago. You and Bo were badgering me to watch it because so, i think he'd reviewed it or, or you'd mentioned it and i said i hadn't watched it and you were both like what go watch it and i did and i fucking loved it and i've never been more scared by an empty wheelchair in my life yeah um ben who shot uh, uh tape three which i was just chatting about a minute ago our, our cameraman he um he hadn't seen it. I'm pretty sure he said he hadn't seen it. I might be wrong. And I was just like, he must go watch this film. Oh, it might have even Mark. I don't know. Somebody related to the movie, because what I tend to do when we're about to uh, make a film of a certain type, I tend to indulge myself. And I was watching loads of like haunted house films just before we did it, because I wanted to get that thing. Yeah. So, so soon I'll be watching lots of Star Wars things, because we're making, yes. making our fan, next thing we're doing, a fan Star Wars horror movie. Well, you'll have to get your uh, get into Disney Plus and watch uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, the six yeah, episodes. I need to watch that. Very good. But then I do have a man crush on Hugh McGregor. Well, that's everything from me. Uh, so we've covered everything now, from Rob Zombie to Nicole Kidman to our buddy Mark acting his ass off in our new short, um, and everything in between. Really, is there anything else you wanted to add before? Oh, Tim Westwood, another BBC radio presenter. Who touched people and shouldn't yeah. touch people, but the radio, yep. sh uh, the BBC knew of and uh, let it happen again. 
for, for anyone who doesn't know Tim Westwood, probably out of the UK, you might not. He is a, a hip hop and rap DJ. Introduced uh, me to hip hop. A yeah, lot of different to- show- not, not just hip hop, but a lot of it. Yeah, I would, I would on a Sunday night hide Same in the here. bathroom with the ghetto blaster, recording his show on tape cassette while my parents thought I was asleep. I'd sneak in there on a Sunday night, and it was a Capital One rap show. Um, um, yeah, he, he was and, just respected by, like, the whole hip-hop community. Yeah, you know, he was a white guy from Reading. His dad was a priest, but well, still is. Was I'm he saying. from Reading? Yeah. Oh, hilarious. And uh, he was very well respected. He famously had an argument with KRS-One on air. And but I the, remember but, that. I remember that specifically. And saying, I was just buying some jerk fish down at the thing, and they've been talking about you, Westwood. And uh, that was yeah. just like, whoa. Well, and over the years, there's, there was a song released called Westwood is a Twat, um, and people in their raps have occasionally dissed him and or said he's a not a pedo or stuff. But it transpires that actually it's all come out now that he did actually have sex with at least one girl who was 14 about 10 or 15 years ago. And he's used basically, like a lot of these BBC guys, as you say, Gav, they've used their power uh, to get to the vulnerable people. And fucking hell, how many more times are we going to see this in the news? Bloody BBC. And they're BBC. The only ones, they're the only ones that want any money from people. The TV I know. License. You got, you what, all, to fund all, your paedophiles? Yeah, everybody you employ is a paedophile. Just get rid Stop of them, it. get rid of the Conservatives and get rid of Brexit. Get some nice people working for your BBC. And on that note, should we go? And let's get, get to demons. Ooh, get some talking, demons talking working demons. for you. <laughs> All right, well, let's, uh, let's come back to uh, Demons after this trailer. Let's do it. The preview you are about to watch is for a movie that is unlike any you have ever seen before. It is for a movie that goes beyond temporary fear to everlasting terror. It is a movie called Demons. Yes, the demons are coming, and they're coming for you. Warning, if you have the courage to see demons sit near an exit, otherwise, you might never get out. In your theater, who will survive the touch of the demons, and who will not? Demons, with music by Billy Idol, Motley Crue, The Adventures, Rick Springfield, and Saxon. This is no dream. This is happening right now. And it could be happening to you. Demons. They will make cemeteries their cathedrals. And the cities will be your tombs. Will you survive it? Demons. Demons from 1985. A group of random people is invited to a screening of a mysterious movie, only to find themselves trapped in the theatre with ravenous demons. Trapped! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Directed by Lamberto Barba, as we've mentioned. Produced by um, Dario Argento. Also screenplay by Dario Argento as well. Um, Music score... It was by Claudio, or Claudio Simonetti. Um, yep. A member of Goblin now. Goblin kind of did a, a, a parting of ways. And he's taking the name of Goblin and doing Goblin. Or he's doing it under I Was In Goblin. And then there is other, the other members of Goblin doing a Goblin too, as far as I believe. Anyway, I did see uh, this character, Simonetti. Um, he was doing... Um, I watched in a church, Suspiria, and he did the score live. Was that with Andy? Did you go with Andy? Yeah, we watched it in a church that. in London uh, on a screen while the, York, uh, the original band groups played of Goblin. Really good, really good fun, as you can imagine. I did that with Psycho uh, many years ago. Alice bought me tickets to see Psycho in the Bristol Hippodrome, but with a live orchestra oh, accompanying it it was man. fucking phenomenal and and i and i don't think anybody was watching the screen when the shower scene came on everyone was watching the, the, the orchestra yeah it was it was an amazing experience and i know that a lot of john williams um you can go watch jurassic park and a lot of the sort of the big na, 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 
yeah na, na, and you can go and watch them with orchestra i love that I'm, I'm, I'm jealous that you've done that and it's that we should i'm jealous that you've done the, done psycho with an orchestra though my friend we should probably start with the music of demons because it's a very there's a lot of music in this actually um whether it's the score or whether it's pop songs it gives uh, it uh, it's like this one and the second one is whoever uh, the, the the correct title for the person that chooses the song is the music supervisor um <clears throat> but that wasn't a thing then it didn't come about as an actual job position to the early 80s i'm pretty sure and i think the first movie was Oh, I can't remember. Repo Man. I think that's the first one that's ever incorporated that. Um, anyway, random fact that. Um, I'm probably wrong with that. Because, though, this movie has these, and the second one has these, the certain songs they have, because the music supervisor chooses the songs, the style. That's why sometimes you watch a movie and go, this song is so out of place. And then sometimes you go, oh, fucking hell, it's amazing. Um, this one's all like a, a, a punk, metal, uh, rock kind of stuff and it's cool and i think it gives it a certain feel to the movies do you know what i mean it gives it a real punk rock thing you obviously got the kids in the car who are the punk rockers in one of the movies the second one um do you know what i mean though yeah totally um it feels gives it another layer well it, yes it does because the film all takes place over one night it feels like it's a bit of a hot night uh, it's you know it's obviously it's in Italy we're, we're at a cinema everyone's crammed in there there's spooky goings on there's demons later on um, there's cocaine flying around um, and it's the mid 80s and and the the extra layer really on top of all of that is the the soundtrack you the soundtrack screams you know 1985 it screams mid 80s cocaine punk rock you know metal faced guys giving out tickets it, it's just the icing on the cake really to this absolutely beautiful little weird film that really appeals to me and uh, and if i may actually the first time i saw it i was i thought it was about 16 or 17 i was at college so i'd have been 16 or 17 and there was a girl in my life there's been two girls that have uh one girl at school got me into hip-hop when i was about 10 or 11 a girl called alison hoskins um, she gave me a load of hip hop tapes that she'd recorded for me because she'd heard that I liked rap and I did but I didn't know much about it when I was very young and so she gave me loads of Cypress Hill Fat Boys Naughty by Nature and ran and got me into like bands that I'd never heard of at the age of sort of 10 and the same thing happened weirdly at college a girl called Melina whose surname I can't remember now she heard I liked horror films and she started bringing in all these horror movies and if I liked them she'd record a copy for me she gave me um Don't Look Now she gave me Demons Demons 2 and a bunch of like probably I'd probably say about a dozen horror films at college and this was one of, this was the one I she lent this to me and I thought and the tape was a bit warped as well. We added to it because it's got that kind of a film within a film thing going on in it. And I just watched this and thought, I probably watched it two or three times over the weekend. I gave it back to her Monday and I said, that was fucking great. Uh, can I please have a copy of that? So she recorded that for me. Um, and I, I just I probably watched this film, I'd say probably at least once a year, if not at least once every 18 months because it's on tv a lot or it's it's on youtube it's easy to chuck on around halloween um and it's quite short i know i know it like the back of my hand that what i'm saying is i quite like this film gav mm. uh, what about you um yeah i've seen it a few times before uh, back in the day I, I don't have nostalgicness for it and to be honest i used to have the box set of this and i got rid of it i yeah so i i don't i don't watch it very often i watched it for this and um, the second one i used to think i liked more until i watched it for this and i went no the first one's better and it's like the first one Ugh. so i'm i'm it's fine it's a movie to me honestly towards the end i feel like they drag a bit i feel like they should be a bit quicker um yeah it's a fine movie it's all right it's cool it's kind of fun it's fun more fun That's when I, thing, it was it's more fun. fun when i was in my sort of 20s sitting around drunk stoned with my mates watching it than we used to it was just good the rock and roll soundtrack and the gore. Do you know what I mean? But watching yeah. it for this as a review, it's a bit like, eh. 
you'd never seen anything like it uh, in some ways in that it threw everything into one there's, film there's good, good stuff in it you know helicopters samurai swords demons film within a film you know great special effects some funny weird moments as well like get it get away from her she's a friend of mine and yeah, yeah there's, there's good shit in it personally nowadays though it's i'm not yeah whatever i could give it i could watch it or not watch it i'm not really fast well, I'll keep my, my VHS that I've got of this probably until my until I can't ever play it anymore. I have got it on VHS, I'm pretty <coughs> sure, though. I, I actually found yesterday, though, because I actually got picked up a video play the other day because the one that you gave me, but I think I told you it stopped working. Yeah, one of the did you say one of the kids put a coin in it or something. No, I did find I did find a few coins in it. Yeah, <laughs> um, um, but that's why I kept taking them out. But no, they used to have a DVD player as well. Um, it just stopped working. But I got one recently. Someone was giving one away for free on Facebook in my town. I was like, amazing, got it. And I actually found I've got a copy of Sleepaway Camp. And isn't that what we're doing next time? Uh, yes, that's perfect. So I you'll found be able a to video copy of Sleepaway yes. Camp, yeah. So I'm going to do oh, that. Amazing. It'll be my first, I think, I don't know if it's my first VHS review. You've done it before, haven't you? You've reviewed a VHS copy of it. Before. Yeah, if I've got it on VHS, I, I, I'll watch that copy of it. Mm, mm. Mm. So I'm going to do that. So that'd be quite fun. I'm looking forward to that. Perfect. Um, but yes, I think I do have this on VHS. But yes, demons. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Well, it is very much. It is very loved in the horror community. I know it film. is, and that's why I'm not going to come out. I'm not going to be negative towards it at all. So for like, all right, it's a fine film. I just mm, don't care anymore. I'm a bit like, eh, whatever. But yeah, it's definitely because of it's because it's so weird and off the wall, and it's got so much random th- stuff thrown together. I think that's why people do love it. I do like though like, Blade in the Dark, Lombardo Barber's uh, film. Slasher. Yeah, well, I'm a fan of Lumberto Barber, full stop, really. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. We're both Mario Barber fans as well. Um, yeah, so we discussed the soundtrack and the score, and then this film starts with that. We've got the score as well, with Claudio Schimonetti as well. It is amazing. You've got that demons, demons sort of chanting going on. And we start with our hero, Cheryl. She's on a train. This music's playing over the top of it. I always feel like I, I, I always watch this film around Halloween because it always reminds me of Halloween. This music and her on that train and everything. And uh, she keeps seeing a face in the window, or did she? Didn't she? Did she? So this is weird, motherfucker. He looks like he's out of some up David Bowie music video or something. He looks like the Terminator. Bowie. He looks like the Terminator had a baby with the Phantom of the Opera. Is is it so? This character is he planning this from the get go? Yeah, to get people there. This so, this particular guy, who is he? What's he got? What's going so, on? So so basically, you know how um, Willy Wonka gave out them golden tickets. Yeah. So this guy's giving out these tickets because they want to they want to uh, possess people, these demons, and he's a demon. He must work. He's either a demon or he works for the demons. And what, what's the plan to take over the world? The plan is, yeah, because it's like almost like a zombie invasion, is it, by the end of it? Mm. So they, you go in, you watch this film, and while you're watching this film, you, you get demonised, I guess that's the word. Is that the word? I don't know. Uh, which is basically not being a zombie, but a demon. Um, and, yeah, by the end of the wor- the film, that the world's come to an end, as we then it continues into mm. Demons 2. So I guess that's the plan. And, and he's either a demon already, or he works for the demons, like a familiar. Yeah. But he's, he's given out tickets... Yeah, he's not selling cinema. it though, is he? You know, no, he's he like literally not the train saying. Section. Basically, he doesn't say a word. Stalks her and then just hands us uh, something to say. Come to this address. No woman's going to do that. But the funniest thing is, she we spend about we spend about two or three minutes of her hiding from him, running, going, oh, 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 gosh, oh. Eventually, he st- steps out of the corner and she freaks her out. Hands her this Metropole ticket, and after all that, she goes, oh. Can I get one for my friend as well? <laughs> you cheeky lady. Oh, okay. can can I um creepy man, creepy man? I'm totally scared of, and I think you're gonna do horrible things to me. Can I get a ticket for my buddy too, so she can just feel these emotions as well? Yeah. Well, she then meets up with her buddy Kathy. Um. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Is this film dubbed over? Like, it's hard to tell, really. I never really. Yes. 
because sometimes it looks like what they're saying is is actually uh, yeah but yeah because uh, well c- quite often you'd actually find um they were saying the some of the di- dialogue in england so like italian films but but the, their accents might have been so thick and strong they're just like let's just get um other people or uh d- no, voice actors from England, or whatever, or wherever, or American, or whatever, to just record over the top of it. So even though it does match up, which is good, it's it's still dubbed. Yeah, because I should imagine There's that a certain tone as well to the audio. Yeah, and I should imagine that um, Tony, the, is it Tony the Pimp? Um, I should imagine his voice is dubbed over because he's just got like a, almost like a cartoon it, voice. It, to, to be honest, though, it could be also the, the same actors. It could be him uh, dubbing it over. But Back in the dubbed. studio. And how you really know is because all of the microphone is right up to the microphone just like this all the time like this, rather than being in the room like this, but it's back and forwards. Yeah. Uh, okay. Which with a uh, mic like that, you're going to give that more air between it but that's why you get like a dubbed one everybody's f- level is exactly the same in the same cadence etc like the old kung fu movies yeah 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 because they're Love in the studio booth just right up to mike saying it rather than you know yeah. So, yeah well we cut straight to the chase but that gives it always a, i think dubbed films always have a certain style to it do you know what i mean there's always like as soon as you get over oh it's dubs as soon as you just get over that it's quite easy to go into it and it gives it a certain, it's like another layer, especially Italian films that have dubbedness to it. It's almost like, oh, I feel at home, you know? Italian horror films and Chinese kung fu films, <laughs> yeah. I, I love watching them when they're dubbed. Yeah, because it's fine. Sometimes it? I prefer to watch the dubbed version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than the, the subtitled, because I, especially with like Jackie Chan movies from well, the kung 70s and 80s. It's subtitled, it's really so much because <laughs> you, you need to watch the action <laughs> rather than you reading do. her words. But I also like hearing like that, hey, you bastard. You stole my chicken. Now I'll show you my tiger fist. And it's like, why would he speak like that? I'm a big fan of like Korean uh, uh, slasher movies where you get like a serial killer. Uh, well, Korean serial killer films. So I yeah. don't mind subtitles on those because you get in there a lot more and it's almost a bit more like, oh, 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 you know, because you're really reading it and taking it in more. But yeah, action films, yeah, subtitles are yeah, a bit, totally. bit annoying. Well, talking of action, we cut straight to the action here, really, because there's no messing around. Uh, Cheryl meets Kathy. She gives her these tickets for the Metropole and says, look, we're off to the cinema tonight to watch this film. I don't know what film it's going to be, but we'll, yeah. we'll go there. <laughs> Who gave you the tickets? This dude. He kind of stalked me around just going to me. So we don't know what we're watching. We don't know what's at the cinema. We're just going to this place and they're going to shut the doors in the dark room. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they arrive at the cinema. And lots of, <laughs> and lots of people are arriving at the Metropole cinema, uh, including our heroes, Ken and George. <laughs> they don't look like heroes, do they? You don't think they're the ones that are going to be there they're, at the end? Uh, one of them's got their jumper, their sweater over their shoulders, you know, in the, in the way that Carlton Banks from the Fresh Prince Below used to and wear they, his. They basically just seen two girls. They're like, great, let's go hit on with these women and just really annoy them in the cinema. Sit next to them. Hi, it's us, right next to you in the cinema. Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, we Poor first women. meet them. We you first know. meet them because they're looking at this motorcycle that's in the foyer. So they've got this weird setup in the foyer of the cinema. They've got a sword, a mask, a Props motorcycle. from the movie. So uh, presumably, because they're giving out free tickets, presumably it's a big, they're assuming it's a big premiere of a sort of movie sort of thing. There's, there's props from the movie there. It's a big event. And they look at the motorcycle and they're like, George, have you ever seen anything more beautiful than this? Look at it. And Ken's like wow, it's really cool. And then he goes, oh, I can see something else that's beautiful. And then they spot the girls. And they're basically a bit too much for these girls, aren't they, really? Like, this wouldn't happen these days. They don't touch them or anything, but they do not take no for an answer, really, when it comes to... It's just a, it's a bit of a personal space, isn't it, really? Uh, you've yeah. got a blind dude off to the cinema, and then that's Always. absolutely... That's Always absolutely fine, because nowadays you do get audio descriptive uh, uh, screenings at most cinemas, all the movies, you'll find at some point there's an audio descriptive version, which I think is really good, actually. And you can actually even take little headphones along and plug them into a lot of the seats nowadays. Um, but this one, this dude is going along blind, but he's taking his assistant, who has the unlucky job of, of reading out the film. Hopefully there's not a sex scene. The cock is now going in, his buttocks are moving up and down, silhouetted her, by the moon. Her name's Liz, and he's like... Liz, what's happening now? And she's like, they're going into a grave. They're g-. And it's just like, if I was sat anywhere near them in the cinema, I'd be like, fuck's sake, I know you're blind, but come on. 
Yeah, no, because we have to go to a cinema game. Can we not go to a concert and you can listen to the music? Or a play where you can listen to it? Or a radio show? I, I find it hilarious when I was younger that there was a blind man in the cinema. I don't know why, but I just thought that was well, a really it, funny... Well, he can't see, and in a movie you have to watch it. That's essentially what we're going with. But audio reads, audibly, it can be done. Yeah. Um, so there we go. There's the blind man. We also meet Tony the Pimp and his two Super sex workers. Fly. And his two, two women, his two ladies. Hey, ladies! Uh, one of them's called Rosemary. Uh, I think the other one's... Uh, I think she's called Ruth or something. I'm not quite sure now. I, but, don't, um, know. I don't know anyone's names in this. He's like, Except Tony. come on! Come on, girls, let's go! And they're all like, sort of... They're clearly on well, yeah. gear and... In Demons 2, I even called him Tony in that too. Yeah, and, and uh, Rocky's in that as well, whatever his name is. He's in it as well as a security guard. We'll get to him yeah, in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the flat-nosed nose, coke, cokehead. The guy who's got a nose for coke. It yeah. really has. Um, so, yeah, so we've got quite an eclectic um, cast. Got you know, Molly people... Crew song playing over the top of this. So we've got a blind man and his assistant. We've got a couple, <laughs> cu- cu- couple of geeks who are going to start hitting on these two friends. Yeah. We've got a, a pimp and his two sex worker employees. And Motley Crew. Um, a Motley Crue playing, and so far, so good. Um, it's, it's looking really good. Now, I've written here, why is the usher dressed up as a Christmas, a sexy Christmas elf? Have you ever noticed that the the usher for the cinema is dressed up as a sexy Christmas elf? I don't know why. I'm not sure. But she seems to be possessed as well. Yeah, because she, she, kind she of seems to be around. involved in it somehow, yeah. I don't know. So I think they're all kind of like, come on in. So, so this this is a movie in a movie. Now the second one is like this as well. I did, I, in a in a way, I suppose they have to show so much of it. But it got to the point though when they're showing this movie in a movie. I was like, okay, stop now. What is going on? Way too long. I want to know what's going on in the cinema and stuff. At times, I felt I felt it just went on a little bit too much. Yeah, I guess when I was younger, I was so into the movie within a movie that I was. I actually was wondering whether it was a real film. Yeah. Because I'd yeah, love to no, see no. that. Because I, for the life of me, I was like, I've got, I, I was like, I used to have a DVD of a Lombard above movie, some people wandering around, four people, two blokes, two girls, going around the woods. And I looked up his credits on IMDb and I was like, I can't fucking see anything there. And I was like, what movie is that? And I was like, was it this? Was this actually cuts from one of his earlier movies? I was really confused because it felt it's like very it. well done i still don't know what that movie was i had um basically the movie within the movie is about as you say two guys two girls and they've heard rumor that nostradamus the um fortune teller or whatever he was um he his body is buried somewhere wherever they are and they they go and find his tomb and they sort of uh dig it up and they find his book of um, predictions his diary you know and a, and a mask as well <clears throat> now we should probably mention that on their way in um, one of the ladies one of the sex workers uh, she cuts herself on the mask doesn't she because she puts it on uh, and Tony's like take it off god damn it so she takes she takes it off and cuts her cheek on it and that happens in the film yes there's parallels to the movie she's watching now she's the one that uh, incites the the demon outbursting of of virus so to speak what but what happened if no one had cut themselves on the motorbike no one had turned to a demon i don't know they just planned on it knowing if they put some memory out some twats gonna fucking cut themselves yeah, someone's going to put Some this mask on. Some going to put it on. You're guaranteed. Let's put a sign here saying, don't put this mask on. You'll get a twat to put a mask on. What's happening now, Liz? <laughs> They're very scared. They've dug up a tomb. Why are they going in there? Oh, for fuck's sake. Just, just get a Braille version of it later when you get home and have, read that, all right? It's, it's like, you know, going back over this movie now, because I, I said what I said, and watching it, I kind of still will feel that if I watched it again. But when talking about it now like this, it's 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 fun. <clears throat> I'm probably going to have more fun talking about it with you now than watching the film. But well, I spe- do like these individual characters and their different traits. Well, do you like the bit now, then, where, where the blind man's <laughs> assistant, Liz, gets a... Uh... A, a gentleman come and sit next to him and starts feeling her up and then they just start getting it on it's like this right Frank I'm going to the cinema with John at three o'clock 
come into the cinema, he's blind. I can still probably descriptively tell him what's happening in the film while you finger me. Probably. We'll give yep. it a go. Come along. Brilliant. Because they do, they really start getting it on, don't they? It gets quite hot and heavy, and and they're obviously turned on by the fact that, and they've probably done this in his living room while he sat there with a cup of tea. What's going on now? No, nothing. <laughs> I'm just cleaning this cabinet. <laughs> it sounds like it's rocking around a lot. It's fine. Is there somebody else in the room, Liz? No, it's fine. That's that's their kink, isn't it? That's but, what's it. But uh, uh, so she goes off sort of just a slowly leaves him a little bit though and goes oh, let's go get it on yeah it's maybe she's like his carer all the time she just doesn't get a chance to have a bit of freedom because like it's not like is it is it his daughter well i thought it was his daughter but i don't know if it's his that would make more sense cause unless it's her assistant and she never or carer and she just never gets any time off so that's why she has to have these planned secret meetings of being fingered in the cinema in the dark because it just seems a bit weird to be honest. What did you get up for the weekend, Liz? Oh, I took blind Johnny to the cinema and got fingered by Frank. What about you? <laughs> Dunno. <laughs> blind Johnny. Uh, I love uh, how it's people smoking fags in the cinema. Yeah, but Tony the pimp and his uh, two employees are having big old cigarettes and then the lady comes over, the um, Christmas sexy Christmas elf, and she says, No smoking! And they go, Sorry, and then as she walks off, they just light up again. Yeah, because they don't care; they're rebels. <clears throat> they do what they want to do. Uh, the couple are still getting it on. They are indeed, and George and Ken, at this point, have come over because they can see our other girls, Cheryl and uh, um, Kathy. They're a bit fra- afraid of this film. Yeah. Uh, so they thought, well, let's uh, let's go and sit next to them. Hi, I'm Ken. Right in her face. Hi, I'm George. Yeah. Do you want I'm some popcorn? Watching. Put your hand in there. See what's no, in there. I don't want any popcorn. What? Have you got a hot dog in this? <laughs> yeah, popcorn? I slipped a hot dog in my popcorn. Oh, there's butter all over it. Milky, milky butter. Oh, good lord, Kevin. Uh, in the movie, in the movie, uh, someone puts a ma- oh, mask on it. It says, anyone that wears the mask turns into a demon. Yep. A la, what's happened outside with the lady putting the mask on and getting a scratched face. Yeah, because they say to her, oh, looks like you're going to turn into a, a pure evil or something. She's like, ah, it's not funny. But her face is hurting and she wants to go check it out in the bathroom. Bleeding. So she goes in the bathroom. Oh, pussy pussy, my face. And there's a little bit of pus coming out, isn't there? Um, uh, and she starts to transform and she does this like... <laughs> noise like that. Good special effects, practical effects. I always like the effects in this film. We cut back to the movie, and there's like people being stabbed in the movie. In the movie, I know it just cuts back to instantly one of the boys stabbing yeah. his friend. We, we've missed a big chunk of this film, clearly. I, I, I don't know what's going on there. And um, yeah, so but then back to it, and a lady, a lady now a demon, she goes and attacks a friend who goes gone to look for her. Well, this bit here, I've written a little note here that says Scream 2, because this bit really reminds me of... It is of, a little um, bit of Scream 2. You know, I'm, I'm guessing that there was some homage, potentially, in Scream 2. just feels a bit too similar. I don't think so. No, I, I don't know. It just seems... It's very similar. It's very interesting, parallel. But, yeah, so there is some of that. But, yeah, the blind man's left alone uh, while all this is going on. Liz, um, what's happening? Uh, because the girl's actually gone off with the guy now. She's like... Fingering is not enough. I need the full Monty. Come with me. Give it to me proper behind the curtain over here. Hot dog in the bun. <laughs> wow. <laughs> is that your rap name? Hot dog banning. I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> hot dog in the bun. Hot, hot dog, dog in, in the bun. Do you bun. know what hot dog in is? Um, well, I know what a hot dog is. Oh, yes, I know what hot dog in is. Yeah. Oh, okay. don't, don't do hand gestures. Please, Gavin, naughty boy, say sorry. I'm sorry. It's very rude. You've just done a rude thing. I love the fact that the the stabbing's going on <laughs> in a film within a film and behind the screen, kind of like Tarantino's um uh hey um the one before it, the Inglorious Bastards, where there's something going on behind the cinema screen. Hmm. Um, you've got this. You've got a uh, pus lady, and um, 
Is she still attacking? Is she attacking her friend there? She, have they, she yeah, got, so she how kills. How do they get she, behind the screen? She kills Ruth. I don't know. She kills Ruth. Ruth leaves the bathroom, and this is what I'm saying about Scream Two because you've got that scene where Jada Pinkett um, bursts through the screen. It, in um, Scary Movie, did it with the, the dick coming through the glory hole? Oh, thing. good lord, they did, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> What? What do you say? Ear penetration. It comes out his other ear, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> Funny. Um, we should. I tell you what. We could do some scary movie movies. I'd just do the first one. Maybe the second one. Take my strong hand. Take the strong hand. Do you see that uh, the fake dildo? Above? Yeah, that's With amazing. A little, little fake hand on it. It's awful. Take the strong hand. It's my strong hand. <laughs> Um, where, oh god, where are we? Oh yes, so they burst through the screen after being attacked. I know, and at this point here, all bets are off, all the audience as well as us, everybody knows some shit's going down. And this is when Ruth falls down, and this is the famous line that Tony says, that our buddy caught sight up, does a great impression of, where he says, God damn it, she's a friend of mine! Yeah. Um which I don't know why that that line makes everybody laugh when he says it, but I guess that's what you'd say if you saw your friend collapse at a cinema. Get away from my guy, damn it, she's a friend of mine. More peeps start to turn into demons. Yes, because um, obviously Ruth was infected by uh, Rosemary. Rosemary's got a very long tongue now, and she's a demon with green slime coming out of her mouth and she's sort of basically like an animal now isn't she she's like ah, yeah, there's, ah. there's, there's, she, she, there's bits where it's just a bit much where it looks like a cheap music video there's times when I think it's that demon there the first one she just it cuts to her they, but they've just been like right we need to get shots of you looking into the camera and it's a big boy then she's really close staring at the camera going blah blah it's like please cut those bits how it kind of ruins it I, yeah I know that what you mean actually it, it, it comes across real much. cheesy like like a music video yeah, Tony the pimp. He clearly, he takes charge because at this point he says, "There's clearly a madman loose in here. We need to we need to do something about this." Or mad woman, Tony. Come on. Or non crazy, non gendered. And we see then Ken and George saying to the girls, "Oh my God, look at her fingernails," because her fingernails start sort of yeah, falling it's a bit off. Yeah, Ralph in London stole like transformation sort of thing going on. I love the delivery of the line. Oh my God. Look at her fingernails. Mm-hmm. It's just there's something in it that just makes me laugh. And she's got that very long tongue, like we said. Her teeth fall out and they're replaced by demon teeth that grow in through the gums. Yeah, that looks really good. Really good. It looks very painful, doesn't it? It the, looks cause, horrible. Because they've done the fingernails, they've done the teeth. Those are two things that you know are going to be painful, really, to push through. It push is through. very American Wealth in London, isn't it? Um, and uh, that must have come out just before this what? well this is 85 oh yeah so yeah so that, yeah but four years before a few years before yeah um, so they've seen that and they've actually yeah okay uh, a guy gets his throat ripped open which looks great as well and this is where everybody just starts obviously everyone starts panicking uh and they realize gavin that the exits are all locked yeah so who, who's done this then this is very, this is a bit american wealth in paris this is exactly what I was about to say. So this is a this is what it's, uh, the demons are doing. I think I think oh, they've attracted everybody America to this. Paris. I've got to watch that again. Also, dust till dawn. You know, you know, the demons will attract you. The vampires, the werewolves, whatever they are, will attract you to a cinema, a strip club, whatever it is, a rave in Paris, and they'll lock the doors and they'll eat you. And that's exactly what they want to do here. Mm. Uh, and the exits are locked, like I say. So Tony takes charge. He says, "Right." Let's take it. Let's take everybody out. Everybody, grab a chair, grab a weapon, and he starts mobilising everybody, doesn't he? Gets everybody to rip the seats out and barricade doors, and yep. Um, they just start trashing the cinema, really. Pretty much. Uh, Tony's just... taking charge. Blind dudes like discovered Liz dead. Yes, that's right. Liz, Liz, is that you? <laughs> Who's this with his fingers in you, Liz? But then here, speaking of fingers, his eyes are popped in. But yeah, it doesn't I, matter. He's he's just thinking, great, I'm blind already, you twat demon. And then just gets up later on and he's still alive because he's just like, well, it's made literally no difference to me. I guess there's supposed to be some kind of, um, I don't even know what symbolism behind that. As the chaos goes on, I love, I don't know what symbolism is. That. As the chaos goes on, I love the metal underneath, which is playing on the soundtrack. Yeah, and... 
we've we've even yet to be introduced to the coke posse who we will meet in a moment i know no, it's like that in the second one the second one's um, very much sort of formulaic uh same as a lady scalped a lady scalped um rosemary's fingers are cut off in the door demon um, pushed into a room and they say that the movie is coming to life and then they they kick the door to the projector room in we gotta stop this movie dudes Dun, dun, dun. There's no one in the projector room. It's Who's, automatic. So who fed the reels? I don't know, Gav. When who the movie fed... started, and in in you got to have to change the reels as you're watching the film. It's not one Demons. huge, massive fucking reel. Demons. Okay. So, uh, Tony the Pimp looks at the automatic projector and says, Smash everything! And everybody just starts smashing the room up. <laughs> It's brilliant. As as humans have done since the dawning of the monkeys and our uh, evolution, <laughs> we've just just discovered the best way to. to after, uh, then money came along, where it's throwing money at it. But beforehand, the other solution was smash it all and burn it down. But it does work because the movie stops, and we then cut to bit of Billy Idol, I think it is. How much Coke is in their, f- their Coke can? Honestly, right. to have a straw. Well, let's let's talk this through. So we cut to... You've got um, ounces of Coke some, in that some thing. Some teenagers speeding along in their car through the thousands Italian Thousands and thousands streets. of dollars worth of Coke in their Coke can. They're listening to lots of eclectic music. They're listening to Go West. We close our eyes. We never lose a way. It's and then such later a on, weird... Listen- it's just all of a sudden like, what are you... What are you I, you know me, I like movies set in the same location, and then we have that outside of it. I always, as everybody knows in the audience, all you guys know, I like it then when the police come along, you think, oh, we're going to be safe now, ah, oh, and that sort of thing. But we've got these cokeheads coming along, but all of a sudden now, we're, we've been stuck interior for quite a lot of period, claustrophobic almost, stuck with these guys. All of a sudden, we're out with a bunch of fucking cokeheads in a car just <laughs> listening to what they're listening to. It's like, it's a kind of breath of fresh air, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. I don't know if we, I want to be or not. We only get a taste of, of them, and then we, we do come back to them later and meet them properly when they spill the Coke everywhere. But initially, we just know that they've got a can of Coca Cola, and that's it's instead now it's filled, I guess, filled with cocaine. It must have cost about a hundred thousand, no, about ten thousand pounds. I don't know how much dollars. cocaine is these days, but that is a lot well, of cocaine in there. Oh, women dollars either. Is it's, it's um. What was the Italian uh, currency? Lira, I believe it was. Okay, so it's going to be whatever the equivalent is in 85 of Coke. But Probably it's about five grand worth of Coke in co- a Coke can. I'd say more than that in that Coke can. It's probably more than that. But it's just and like, what the fuck? Of, I love it. At one point, one of the guys does the, does it out of the straw out of the can, and he says, this shit awake the dead. <laughs> <laughs> it probably <laughs> would. It, I love the fact it's in a Coke can of a straw, though. That is a little bit like... It's a bit it's a bit blase, though, because at any point, it could get spilled. Which it, which we find out later on it does. But before all of that, we cut back to the cinema survivors. Tony this wants is, to go and throw someone off the stage. Ah, throw him off the balcony! Well, this is where um, the blind man sort of pops up. <sighs> My eyes have been ripped out. It They're doesn't all matter. Demons. I was blind anyway. <laughs> fuck, fuck them. Uh, they ripped my dick off, but I didn't have one. Uh, <laughs> I never used it anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, and they find a body. And they throw it in, throw it in the stools. So they throw it down. I don't really know why they're throwing the bodies down. Uh, it feels like Tony just wants to throw everything around. Really, mm. he's got a lot of aggression, pent up aggression. Well, well, I think that's why he hits the gym in the second one, basically, because he's just taking out that aggression. Because he's just got, he's too hyper. Man, you're too muscly. Get the hell out of my gym. Man, your old, your old muscles, no brains. Yeah, he's brilliant in that. He's, I think I prefer him in the second one. I, I, yeah, no, yeah, I like him in the second one than this one. I think he's really good in the gym, leading everybody. Come on, let's, let's beat if him up. In the, if I was in the gym in the Demons Two, and, and Tony, the gym instructor, not the pimp, walked in and said, "I want you to do a hundred of those," I'd be like, "Okay, right." Well, I was going to say, like, when watching Demons Two. When all the muscle men and Tony, and that, and I was thinking, oh, I'd love to be there. It'd be great. I don't, I don't fucking understand behind Tony and all these muscle friends. They're just going to yeah. like beat up demons. I'm just going to stand here going, yeah, go for it. Especially when they start wielding all the dumbbells and all the weights and everything. But um, Back to this one. Back to demons one, though, yes. So, um, blind man, blah, 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 blah. We cut back to coke in a can. This shit would wake the dead. 
Tony is bitten. Oh, Tony does get bitten. He uh, does. Well, Billy Idol White Wedding's playing. What the hell? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But he, uh, Tony gets more than bitten. He gets eaten. Um, yeah. His last instruction is rip out the seats oh, and make a barricade. And then he's bitten and eaten. And that's the end of Tony the Pimp. Um, Coke can. Uh, I love the fact that here there's like some really random scene of a, a nipple being almost sliced. Yeah, so just for this our... This is weird. For our listeners, um, so they... They pass some of the, the the can of cocaine around, and it, someone drops it, and he t- t- uh, Rocky, who's the, um, the leader of the gang, who's driving the car. He or was it Tommy? I can't remember if it, what his name is now. Oh, I don't know. I oh, know it's Hot Dog. He's called Hot Dog. Of course he is. <laughs> Hot he's Dog in. Um, I've always called him Rocky. I don't know why. He turns around and he says, "Pick it up, every last gram." And he makes them pick it up. It turns the... into, like, uh, brain detail in Pulp Fiction. Yeah, and they're, they're scooping up all this cocaine and putting it back. And while they're there, they have a little a little bit on the gum, a little bit on the nose as well. And then a little bit drops down onto um, whatever the lady's name is. Uh, what is her name? Oh, Nina. And uh, the other guy next to her says, oh, there's some snow in the valley. She's, and a, she... very, she's a very unattractive lady. And she... Uh, she lets him sort of scoop it off her breast with a, a razor blade, but then, like you said, Gav, he starts stroking her nipple with a razor blade, and I think he hurts her because she goes, "Oh, I think, yeah, I think so." It's just a bit like I don't know, I don't know what, what, what we're saying here really anymore. But her voice changes. She sort of goes, "Did you fucking hurt me?" She says, "Like, don't you fucking hurt me?" Her voice almost demonizes a bit. I'm like, "What the? What's going on here?" Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an odd one. Yeah. Anyway, so th- th- they're doing that. They pulled outside they're... the cinema, and it happens exactly. to be the cinema that everybody's inside. And this is where... Um, do they hear some noise now coming from the cinema? What the hell is that? Do they hear some banging coming from they the cinema? They do hear a bit, but it's the cops turning up which make them, you know, get out and run. Oh, I love it when the cops turn up. And if they'd have been arrested, they'd have gone to jail for hundreds of years for that amount of cocaine. Um, but... Instead, they they run away from these two fat Italian cops, yeah. and they just sort of say, "What do they say to them? Pigs are scum. Fuck you, pig, or something, something like that." Like that yeah. And they just run away, and they try and get into the cinema. Now that's a mistake, Gab, isn't well, it? Well, they get into the cinema. Everybody's trying to get out of the cinema. And they somehow get in. Yeah. Why don't you? Just, okay, you need. <laughs> but I guess they they're sort of they've been. The auditorium still free. The foyer bit is uh, still open for. Not business, but it's open. Uh, where the other side, it, all the doors, the actual screening have been locked, isn't it? That's what's going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Well, they they get kind of like exit. Carrie in the uh, dance hall. Yeah, mm-hmm. they they break into a fire exit. By the way, the line is "All pigs suck." That's the line. I did have it written down. Um, while they're breaking into the cinema, the the blind man, who's now a demon, he comes out and he kills the cops. So uh, it's therefore spreading the demonness even further. You know, it's out there now. So we've got some demon cops. All I had to do is literally run away from him. Yeah, he's blind. Do you know what I mean? He's a demon and he's blind. He's gonna take it. He's gonna take a moment. Yep. But these are two guys that let someone shout, "All pigs suck!" at them and run away. Yep. So they're not very good at their job. They don't really care what they're doing. Um, but yes, we're in the cinema now with the gang, uh, and. This is where we cut to Hannah and Tommy in the air vent. It's quite a good scene, this, in the air vent. Do you not think that the, the sound design and they, they hear, like, a scratching sort of sound as they're crawling through the air vents? Okay, I didn't really notice the sound design. Uh, and you hear, like, like what's that noise? It's behind us. No, it's in front of us. What is it? Oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, we see the demons coming down the corridor. And this is the front cover of the poster now. Uh, oh, what can't... Yeah, that silhouetted look. It's, it's a great, great look, and it's sort of, they sort of do it again in a second one, that kind of a version of that. All the eyes glowing. And it looks really good. And it's a full-on demon attack. Yeah. We get a lot of random deaths now, left, right, and centre. People are just getting killed. George and Ken and the girls, um, they run off. They kind of get away. That's the little foursome. And the girls now are probably going, I'm glad that these nerds are probably with us. They hassled us before, but I'm kind of happy to have... Maybe someone else with us to fight our 
fight our way out. I'm glad that these potential sex offenders are now with us. Are with us now, so they we can feed Basically, them. Basically, what we've got: much. potential sex offender, demon. I'm going to go with a potential sex offender. It is potential. But Kathy has been bitten, and she transforms. So they kill her into a butterfly. Not, not a butterfly, a demon. A demonic butterfly. So they kill her. But they kill her, and a demon decides it's going to burst out of her back. A demon, she gives birth to a demon out of her back. Uh, <laughs> didn't expect that one. <laughs> didn't think that was coming, to be honest with you. I don't know. You feel so much. It's just the way you flung your hands in the air. Um, she gives birth to a demon out of her back. Didn't expect that one. <laughs> Sorry. You know. <laughs> I was drinking beer as you said it as well. <laughs> but that's true. No one saw that one coming. Um, but luckily, well, the demon scratches Ken uh, and Ken says, please kill me with that samurai sword, George. Like, what a specific request. I've been scratched. It is. It if is, you're going to kill me, you kill me with the samurai sword because that's how heroes die. It's, yeah, and it's good to have choices. So George jumps on the the bike with the sword uh, come on, there can't be that much space from riding up and down that motorbike. He is very controlled with one hand on that motorbike, up and down the cinema, over dead bodies with a sword. Yeah. Uh, did you ever used to watch that, um, what was it on BBC Two on a Saturday morning, where you used to watch the motocross, where they... Maybe. Doing the scramble bikes up and down all the obstacle courses. I probably did, yeah. It's very much like that. And he gets his uh, girly on the back of the bike. Sword like swinging motorbike action over metal. Yeah, it's great. I mean, if you describe to somebody, this scene contains a man with a girl on the back of his motorcycle. Yeah, go for a scene Swing the samurai sword. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd, yeah. And there's metal playing. They'd say, well, there's only one thing missing. And you'd say, I got you covered. You're thinking, it needs a helicopter to come crashing through the roof. And they'd say, yeah, but there's no way that's going to happen. Well, Demons gives that to you, everybody, because all of a sudden, for no reason at all, the ceiling collapses... And a helicopter. A random helicopter just, just drops a in. Random now, <laughs> when you write a script for a film, you generally think like budget restraints. At no point have I written a script and thought, fuck it, we need a helicopter dropping through the ceiling here. That won't be too expensive. I thought it was a model. No, it's not. They're standing extra. It's like, what the shit? Like, it's absolutely. Real. But yeah. the producers must be like, why do you want a fucking helicopter coming through? Can't we have. Can't the motorbike just go through a wall or or something a helicopter a a helicopter coming down from a ceiling upside down it's not even like it's a simple thing to do so I got this muddled up with um, Dawn of the Dead when I was younger because of the, the helicopter and that and, and I would always yeah, think yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they, when they escape in the helicopter, did they crash into a cinema? I couldn't remember. It's cool, imagine if, it takes imagine out, that would have... Yeah, the propeller takes out the demons, <laughs> but then we have that in Dawn of the Dead as well, propeller taking out some of them. That's true. Hmm. Um... But he also then grabs a grappling hook cannon thing. I don't know if he makes this like MacGyver. It's no, it's, see, this is a, this is my out here. My next note is now the movie's dragging and should have finished. It's really weird. Now we've got this because I'm like in that cinema, I swing the sword. I thought we we're going to probably finish coming up to a finish. And then all of a sudden, this helicopter comes down. He turns into Ash out of Evil Dead almost. And it's, he's like Rambo, now, isn't he? It's like what is this now? And it kind of. I don't know, it threw me into another thing. It wasn't the movie I had, it's now like something different, do you know what I mean? Well, he fires the grappling hook. It's um, fun to talk about and you know, stuff, like a helicopter come down the ceiling, but it just seems a bit weird. It is, and that's why I Maybe love it. when they wrote it... I think they were doing a bit of the old waking up the dead. Possibly. If they made this now, Nicolas Cage would be in this. Nicolas Cage would be fucking all over this shit. Yep. Have you seen that so, movie yet? With him as him, no, I really oh, want it. to. Yeah. Have uh, you? Uh, no, it's out for rent, I think. Mm. Well, grappling hook gets fired. Him and Kathy, um, they're pulled out by the winch. Get climbed up. They get pulled up through the winch to the to the roof. They make it up there, and all of a sudden, old ticket man, Mister Metal Face Phantom of the Opera, is up there. Of course he is, and uh, he punches. He pushes George down into the hole but George grabs on and he comes over to him and he just starts 
knocking his it's really horrible this bit he just knocks his hands away every time he grabs on so he doesn't is that, drop why is this guy with a metal face so so pissed off that he just does not want what's well, his job you cannot let anybody out the building and he's like oh my god that helicopter for whatever reasons just come through the roof i better get up there because some motherfuckers are probably going to try and climb out there and i'm going to push him back down he's got some real beef but thank god that cheryl not kathy it was cheryl she just stabs she stabs Face his stab. head down onto like a metal pole yeah, yeah. and it's very slow and very good looking practical effect actually yeah um onto a metal spike and then then there's other demons get out of the cinema and start attacking people and it's and the, the virus has spread now yeah. but why, why did they lock them in there so why did the virus have spread in the first place so that they could definitely infect them all i guess so they climbed down a fire escape the city is in chaos everything's on fire they're running around and then all of a sudden See, the jeep for, pulls up for me in the movie now i was like the movie should have finished why is it now uh, we're now outside of a jeep with some other people coming up i know it makes it apocalyptic and to explain the outside world but it just seems so weird that now we're doing this though it's like well, well, I don't know, let's well, introduce some more new characters. What? You know? But the, the movie's only about 85 minutes, so if they hadn't have had any of this, you'd be only watching about an hour's film. I'll be happy with that. But this Jeep pulls up and jump in. They yeah. say, jump, jump in. So they get in this Jeep, and there's a boy, a girl, and then a man in this Jeep. And uh, they drive off. Um, and there's, a, like I said, a woman, a man, and a kid in the front. And they, they are shooting at demons as they drive along. My, my problem is, and that's just a movie, but really, how on earth has all this apocalyptic stuff happened to this family of all of a sudden weaponised themselves in a jeep going around killing demons? It's only been the length of the movie it's happened. It's about, it's about an hour it's been, because they cut the movie off about But those demons only it. just got out of cinema. So was there other demons going on in the world? Was this happening? Yeah, maybe there was other cinemas showing That's this film. That's what I'm thinking, and I think they should have played it more like... If they did a remake of this, I think they'd show different cinemas, and they'd be like, online screening. It'd be like The Ring, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's how they'd do it. Well, they say to them... They say to uh, George and Cheryl, hey, there's uh, plenty of guns in the back there, on the floor. So they start handing out all these guns to everybody. They give George a big gun. He says, we're heading to the countryside. Hopefully... We'll be able to survive and start a new life out there. It's like it's been an hour. <laughs> Just wait for the army to show up, perhaps. Yeah, but anyway, hold the... on. Maybe, maybe we need to start a new family. Maybe uh, we should eat each other. But that, was that the sex pest, though? So, the, uh, and that's the end, as far as we know. The music starts, the credits roll, and we slowly zoom in onto the back of Cheryl all the way through till the very last second. She's a demon! And the kid just blows her head off. <laughs> she falls off the back of the jeep. I've put, written a note that says, sorry, George, because I think he thought he was going to... Uh... No. No. And uh, that's it. We just look at her bloodied corpse lying on the road as they drive away. Yep. That's the final credits roll. Yeah. I always liked that ending. I didn't see it coming. I love that... Um, I, know I, could, I could tell as the zoom in was happening that something was going to happen yeah you know it's pretty obvious but who would have seen that she didn't survive who would have seen a helicopter was going to come through the roof samurai swords helicopters motorbikes motley crew billy idol what pimps pimps hustlers players uh t t do you gin and juice do you recommend it <laughs> i highly recommend it i would say if you've never seen it I recommend it if you've never seen it and you're a horror fan. Mm. But if you've seen it, meh. If you've seen it. No, I think... That's my own opinion. I think if you have watched this quite a lot of times, like myself, this will be like your Fright Night, or it'll be one of the ones that you can put on and it's watch a lot. It's a one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think if someone like you who's watched it a few times... A couple not... times, and then we watched it for this, we review it, oh, it's just a bit like... Mm. But I definitely recommend Demons. I think it's great. It's got a great soundtrack, great special effects. Um, and like I say, it's hard to have not seen this. If you're a horror fan, you probably would have seen this because it is very much loved in the horror community. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very much loved. That's why I'm not bashing it, and I'm not bashing it in any way. Uh, right, let's get out of here and... Bill? Have a little bit of that. 
You ready for... Uh... Yeah? He's saying he's ready for World of the Strange. Okay, he looks a bit happier as he's been drinking. Oh Have you been God. drinking again? He's drunk half that bottle of that Japanese gin. <sighs> we better get on with this because he's not going to be able to end the show at this point. All right, Bill, take it away. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. World. Strange. Strange. Strange world. It's a strange world. And I think to myself, what a strange world. So, got one story for you today, guys. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Billy Boy. One story. No more drinks, yes? Thank you. Very interesting little story. Put it away. And you'll like this sorry, story because it's about it's about a big hole. Do I like big holes? Well, you do talk about holes quite a lot. Mm. Um, so here's the headline, and then we'll read through it and we'll discuss what what the hell this is and what what we think about it. So, Canadian officials stumble upon an immense cave that's never been seen by humans before. Wow, where where are we speaking? Canada. Is this the one where they have found some microorganisms growing, which they don't know what they are? Ah, I've done and they, well. were, they are extremely very old, like a new microorganisms. They don't know what they are, and they said this could even be what um, we might find eventually on Mars and stuff like that. Possibly. Well, let's read through this. Um, so this week in Canada, this was about two weeks ago, news sources reveal that staff working for the Ministry of National Resources have found a huge cave. Its mouth of the, the mouth of the cave is over 100 metres. That's 328 feet is wide. It, is this because of the earth changing and things are opening up and water levels are dropping and we're discovering new things? No, this isn't a sinkhole, but I will tell you why it, why it's come about in a moment. Okay. Uh, it's also 197 feet or 60 meters high, so it's huge, this cave, very big, and it's never been seen what? by human eyes. Weird. Uh, yeah, explain, please. So, uh, in the most Canadian way possible, I'm just reading the story here. A boot? The, the cave was spotted during a routine caribou counting exercise caribou is a, an animal um, the team stumbled upon their unusual find flying a helicopter around British Columbia mm -hmm. somebody said my, Catherine Hickson said my immediate reaction was that there can't be a cave there there's nothing on maps it's impossible we've got nothing registered well apparently it was covered up by snow and obviously with global warming this is one part of Canada that has never been revealed. Is that what I told you because the earth's changing. Yeah, yeah, so you're right. It's not a sinkhole, but it is a cave that's always been there. That's why we're finding loads of by the snow. That's where we're finding loads of uh, fossils and stuff now, um, because the water levels are dropping, and we're finding stuff which is like really good condition. Mm. Like they found a baby mammoth. Like, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of discoveries as well, especially with the James Webb Telescope in the space as well. We're rediscovering lots more data now and information. <coughs> and I saw the other day that we've now charged, um, mapped 25% of the ocean floor. It's wow. taken 15 years. Wow. So how much? 24%? 25%. 25%. That's the thing. And that's that will... It's, you know, call me, call me insane. I think aliens are down there. Mm. I think they've got a portal down there. Well, they've got a hole down there, is what you're saying. Yeah. So this cave is certainly one of the largest, if not the largest, in Canada, which is crazy. That they've only just found it, really. So the opening's huge as well, yeah? Yeah, the opening's huge, and it's really deep. Um... They so, can, so they could just send like some drones in or something or it says when you're standing on the edge looking down into it your line of sight is about 600 feet you don't get a line of sight 600 feet in Canadian caves this just doesn't happen right so you can see for 600 feet into this cave what are we thinking so far what are you thinking so far what if that's where the spaceship's going in and out 
Mm, that could be your portal you were talking about. So researchers have found no reference of this cave on any map because it's been covered in history. In They're actually in the process of speaking with the indigenous people, so the native Canadians, whose people have lived there, you know, since he's, he's, um, the you, white man came. And are you saying like you can look? You're standing there and look directly at it. And you see the cave, you could look 600 feet in, or you're saying you look down and you see it's like you a look down. So, how's snow <laughs> filling up that whole? That's a mass amount of snow to fill up yeah. that whole area, the circumference and the depth. How's that possible? I don't know. They've appealed to the public and the indigenous people to come forward if they've got any knowledge. But if it was, okay, if it was an alien thing, why now would they do that and why would they reveal it? There's no reason, unless they're not using it anymore. No, but they haven't revealed it. It's just the snow's melted. Yes, but they've been in control of it, I'd have thought. They might have some <laughs> fucking snow machine or something. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that keeps it camouflaged, because you can't have that much snow to fill that that depth and, and circumference. Uh, uh, blip blob. Yes? <laughs> um... You, congratulations, we're moving you to Canada. You're on, uh, you know, the cave 1.3? Yeah. You're uh, in charge of the snow machine. Blip blob. Oh, great. I look forward to that. <laughs> the That's... camouflage snow, snow machine. Can you can you do your impression of your alien again? Uh, okay, yep. Yeah. <sighs> I like that. He's very sweet. <laughs> um, uh, well, that's what I think's going on. You, you may laugh, sir. You may laugh. I think that's what's going on. There's a camouflage well, snow machine hiding the UFO's portal. So it's suspected that until recently, the area, including the cave, the mouth of the cave, would have been covered by snow, which kept it masked for all these years. Thanks to global warming, though, obviously now it's revealed. Uh, between the snow and the fact that it's not in an an area that many people ever go to it's never been seen by human eyes mm. um, so far one person has descended into the cave a guy called Lee Hollis and he made it only 80 metres down but couldn't get any further because inside the cave there is a waterfall what the shit which turns out up to 15 cubic metres of water a second too powerful for him to pass through that's the that's the portal underneath that's, it. That's the gate. Experts believe that the portal leads to an underground river because there's a river that emerges 500 meters past the cave. But that's a man. If you could bottle that water, you could make a mint. Yeah, that'd be tasty water, very fresh. Yeah. Um, the location of the cave, which has been nicknamed. The Sarlacc Pit. Wow. Uh, because it looks a bit like the pit from Star Wars. So you can't go far, and I've obviously the trouble is with a drone. Even if you had a waterproof drone, the trouble is, is like the signal is going to go so weak, you're going to lose signal and just lose the drone and not get it back. So I guess, I guess you have to try and do it yourself. Fuck. Mm. And if you can't get, you, you could. Is there not another way that you could do that though? Like a steel umbrella? I don't know, it was so powerful a to push steel it down. umbrella. <laughs> You're going down <laughs> caving with ah, steel. Holding a steel umbrella. <laughs> It'd be like trying to walk through like a hundred pressure wash, jet washes. I know, I know. Or like so a, a big fire hose at you. When I first like bought Rambo my... getting his bum washed in first blood. <laughs> When I first bought my jet washer, I was cleaning the garden. I thought they're good, thought, aren't they? What, does this hurt? So I fired, <laughs> I fired it on my hand. Immediately regretted it. Oh, and I thought, but why didn't you get Alice? Can you, Alice, take this? I'm going to stand back. Hit me here in the chest. I want to know what happens. It really hurt. And then I thought, well, maybe that was because it was my hand, and my hand has got like a soft palm. I'll try it on my leg. did it again. Brilliant. Put it on my leg, and it really hurt. Anyway, so that's why they can't get it down there. They're figuring out what to do. I just want to be a bird in your garden, 
Just minding my own business, looking for some worms. Tweet, tweet, tweet here, tweet over here. Look, tweet, tweet, look up. Oh, look, there's one of those weird humans. What's he doing? With that? Oh, that water thing. I don't know. That's okay for me. I won't fly off just yet. What's he doing? What's it? Why has he stopped? What's he doing? And there's you just shooting your hand and going, ow, <laughs> ow, then going, hmm, and putting up your leg and shooting your leg, ow, ow, and he's just like, birds just like, oh. what's he doing? Silly human. Silly human. Well, that's it. They've they've only done the one descent. This is this news only has only happened in the last uh, week or so. Yeah. So it might be one that we come back to. Yeah, man. And I wonder on. if it is the ones with the same one with the microorganisms they've discovered. I think you know, that it could be like one a new life in, starting um, up. I think that one was in South America or something. Okay. Because I saw that one. It looked like something from a James Cameron Avatar movie or something. It was like yeah, all yeah, bright blue, coloured blue, inside. Like a uh, uh, bulby like thing. Yeah. I know. Bulb. I looked like I was holding testicles then, but I wasn't. It looked like you were milking a cow then. It did, didn't it? Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> so there we go. So you think... No, two cows. Oh, no, no, it's one cow. They've got plenty so of whales. So this giant cave, just to summarise, you feel that this cave is a portal, an alien portal that leads somewhere, maybe to other galaxies, and yeah. they've got two lines of defence. One of them is an alien called Blib Blob with a snow machine. And the waterfall. And the waterfall is second line of defence. Where possibly, if Schwarzenegger in his heyday had a steel umbrella, might might make it through. And are you saying that the Predator is living down there? No, aliens. I know well, Predator is an alien, yeah, but I mean, like, uh, not Predator aliens, different aliens. Well, there we go. I loved it last time, though, where we had Jimmy Savile as a Predator. And Bill Cosby. That's fucking ingenious. So, that's your that's, that's your uh, story. That's my theory. It's your story. You get that wrong. <laughs> Bill! Bill, I think it's time to take us out of here. <laughs> Come on, Bill, get us out of here. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. And now, Imperial Entertainment is proud to announce that a blockbuster horror experience is coming soon, right after its current theatrical release Demons 2 The Nightmare Returns. <laughs> There's nowhere to hide. No place to run. No one is safe. Let me out of here! From the unspeakable terror heading your way. In Demon's Tomb, the nightmare returns. And we're back after that little trailer, and this is obviously Demons 2 from 1986. A group of tenants and visitors are trapped in a 10-story high-rise apartment building infested with demons who proceed to hunt the dwindling humans down. Yep. So we could, have done, we could have done this when we did our Dread and our Raid episode. You know, we could have and it, kind of remo- it kind of reminds me of Poltergeist 3 a bit. It also reminds me of that uh, Cronenberg film, um, Shivers. Shivers, yeah, because it's all you know in a high-rise apartment block. Mm. Um, so that's yeah, why, that, that's why I think I kind of like this one. But I think I just, I think I put it in there. Paul Guys Free and all these other movies. So I think it's just a childhood thing. That that girl that lent me Demons One. She also well at the beginning of Demons One was a trailer for Demons Two, and I said to her, "Have you got the second one?" She said, "No, but I'm getting it soon." And I don't know where she got all these tapes from. She ended up getting it. And I watched it, and I, I didn't really remember it, to be honest with you, until I rewatched it about well, when I first got Shudder, so it was about four or five years ago. Okay. Um, and it's not quite as good as the first one, in my opinion, but there's still some good stuff in it. But it's it, it's a little bit, it feels like a little bit less. Um, it's just a bit more manic in this one, isn't it? It's a bit crazier. Yeah, it's the same story, uh, essentially. It's the same beats. Um, yeah, I can't. I don't, I don't know. Again, it's a it's a contained film, but but we are contained within different rooms, so it is a bit more die hard. Uh, with the you whole just compared tower this block. Film Demon, to Demon die hard. Two and Die Hard. Imagine if Bruce Willis was in this. I mean, you look like him right now in that white vest. I guess I do, don't I? It's got got a hairline, I suppose. He got it. Yep. 
Uh, uh, the other day, I thought it was, uh, it was terrible. The other day, I thought not only do I have, to, I love the fact that I was comparing my body to Arnold Schwarzenegger's, but I, I was like, not only do I have Arnold Schwarzenegger's hair now that he has now, I also feel like I look like I have his body that he has now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that doesn't look good. I've currently got the body of Vin Diesel when he's not <laughs> make, when he's not making a Fast and a Furious movie. When he's not doing anything, yeah. And he's sitting on a balcony with a glass of wine. Yeah. But um, they'd all hang out. That's what I do. That's what I try and do. Uh, this movie starts with some narration that is a little bit inaudible, inaudible, should I say? And I can actually understand what was going on. What was this narration about? Well, he's basically describing the first film, really. Um, ah, okay, okay. And he says demons can exist should and do uh, do exist. Yeah, yeah they could have done that, but I quite like the, the I quite like the talky bit. Um, they could have done both. And we we get some blood dripping down. Someone limps down a corridor. And it's all a trick because it's not blood. It's somebody pumping red uh, dye onto a cake for someone's birthday. Oh, and it says, happy birthday, Sally, on the cake. Um, we find out we're actually in like a... a ho- it's not a hotel. It's, a, it's a apartments and stuff. But you do have a, a, sh- a receptionist downstairs who would act as security and act as probably a... a, a, a handyman so to speak sort of do things that need to be done like and a con- that, concierge concierge and it happens to be our, our fella co- lead cokehead from demons one it is so it's uh mr coca-cola knows himself and he's got his nose is what is his nose what's it's, wrong it's, with it's, his nose it's just very flat nose it looks like it's been broken multiple times yeah he's got yeah it's a bad nose is all i'm gonna say but it, it probably was fine for snorting cocaine. Yeah, it can probably hold quite a few grams up there. I wouldn't be surprised if that demon's one, they actually snorted coke, because they're like, yeah, I'm playing a coke head, I'm going to... happens. Lamberto Barber's like, what do you need for to get into the motivation for this scene? And they're like, um, oh, can you fill this Coca-Cola can with real coke? And he's like, yeah, okay, we can do that. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Eight grand of the budget going on that, and that's fine. In the right, in the right movie, if I was filming something with someone's characters in a certain way, if they said to me, can I, like, actually do that, or get drunk or something, I'd probably go, like, all right, let's go along with it, potentially, because it could actually go wrong, and then it destroys the whole fucking thing, and you can't film anything. Well, Sorry. don't forget, um, we talked about this in our last episode, when uh, Gary Oldman got really drunk to film the scene where he shaves Keanu Reeves. Yeah, yeah. Weird time to get drunk, Gary. Like, thing is, though, with Gary Oldman, you know, though, uh, uh, if he's saying that, do that. But I think if this kid said, came up to me and said, oh, I want to snort coke for my character, I was like, I don't know, actually, man. You're yeah. not a seasoned actor. I don't know what you're going to do. Yeah, you're probably going to end up stabbing everybody. Yeah. But we've got an apartment um, block with various people going about their day-to-day business. We have a pregnant yoga lady who has a, a fella fella with uh, yes, got glasses. It's, it's very odd. Um, it's a mixture. Like, why is she doing yoga? Well, I know there's pregnant yoga, but it's like, I don't know, it's cool, but it's weird. But yeah, she's got a doing husband. Doing yoga pregnant's great. It's, uh, it's a good way for, getting, for movement and stuff. They're concerned, this couple, aren't they? Because uh, the the family, the woman who lives upstairs from them, Sally, is having a party. Oh, I hope it's not going to be a loud one. You know what Sally's parties are like. It should be Rick Moranis. Oh, you guys want to play some Nintendo, some Mario Brothers later on? Who brought the dog? <laughs> Tony, uh, there's a gym at this place for obviously people who or, like you have a car park down in the basement. Um, you've got one bit of the level presumably lower down is is a gym um and we got tony from before is the yeah. gym leader he's not called tony this i am gonna refer he's to called, him as he's called tony. hank hank tony's way better i don't know why <laughs> okay fine I, I like the name hank but yeah tony is hank, better. hank's cool but i think he's a tony tony, tony was my tony grandpa's name yeah but my grandpa wasn't a pimp um so yeah he's the gym owner and not he's not that you kind of, know of not that I know of. He's going around saying, come on, you, you got damn it. You got to work out more if you want to get bigger. Look at me. Look at my arm. And he's sort of telling everybody to get bigger. And one guy sort of says, 
oh, hey, Ham, what's two plus three? And he's like, like you said earlier on in the episode, he says, you got all this muscle and no brains. No muscle, no brains, kid. So good. Just... He says that later on, I think, when they're like in, dis- in, like, in despair, like something needs to be done super quick, and he's, he's like, fucking, you know, you thick, thick bastard. <laughs> Figure it out. Um, the party, so, so Sally upstairs, her party's in full swing now. It's definitely Rick Morales. She's expecting to walk past and say, hey, people, this, is my, this is my tax accountant. People are dancing in suit and ties. Uh, it's the 80s, and they're dancing wildly it's just quite tame music as well this gets back to old finger jigging Friday 13th doesn't it, it does doesn't it it really does what's it called um Crispin Glover Crispin Glover yeah it's that kind of dancing to really tame music yeah and we see while the party's in full swing Sally isn't there yet she's in her room she's getting ready and uh, she's she's a bit like she's a bit excited but she's a bit anxious she's you know it's her party it's a special party She's getting ready, that's fine. And we do meet many, many more residents um, from all over the place. Uh, we meet a horny couple, um, a family. Uh, not the same thing. They're not a horny family. They're a horny couple and they're not family. <laughs> um, but everybody seems to have the TV on with this this demons uh, movie. Yeah, the, um, the kids are watching it. Uh, the woman who's doing her makeup, <clears throat> getting ready, is just like something in the background. Even the kids watching it. Um, the kids pick up the phone, and uh, uh, later on when they're alone, they, they pick up the phone. Uh, just a random person. It's a really weird scene. Just rings up, and says, and he says, "No, we're all alone. Our parents on here." Okay, bye. You don't say that to people. They could potentially be people who want to come over and break in to the home. Obviously, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, so it's Sally's party, I put here. Sally's party has amazing tunes. Now, this is weird. You've got here, which is quite interesting. They're playing the Smiths. And um, it, and it always said, the first time that you hear something, it says, Panic in the streets of London. You just hear that, and then it cuts. And it's really interesting. Edgar Wright did it in Shaun of the Dead, where it cuts through the radio frequencies, and it tells you what's going on in the story by different lines of words. And it has Panic in the streets of London. is chaos erupts, and it goes through all these different things. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was really interesting that they just showed that little clip of that. And I was thinking, I wonder if Edgar Wright got that idea from that. Yeah, potentially. Like when he's younger, though, it's sort of inbred into his genes of filmmaking to him to go, oh, that's a good way of putting across a, a, a statement by some cool, you know, uh, cut yeah, scenes. because they're all sort of um, dancing to this kind of music. And, and meanwhile, the film that's on the TV um, has got some kids who break into a building. And it's kind of like Blair Witch 2, I would say, in this, in that... We're supposed to go with the fact that the first film might have actually happened, or, or the first film is like a a documentary or something. It's hard to figure out because these kids on the TV in this film, so the movie in Demons Two, mm. is about a group of kids who break into a building and they're talking about the great demon sort of apocalypse. There was like a zombie outbreak, but it was demons. And they find a demon claw, which is, I think, what they've all been looking for, because they're worth a lot of money, and they can sell it for lots and lots of money. And they find this claw, and a demon claw belonging to a demon. And you're like, okay, again, I'm intrigued by the movie within a movie here. I want to know more about what's going on with this, really. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we might as well call this guy Rip Moranis, because the phone goes at Sally's party. Now, this poor guy doesn't know what's going on, does he? picks up the phone and he says hey uh yeah come on up the party's going on sally i just spoke to frank and he's on his way up it's her ex-boyfriend isn't it right the party's over everybody fuck off and go home talk about overreaction jesus christ he's like i didn't know who he was he just said he was coming to the party so i said come on up right you've invited him up get down there and stop it before he comes up here like, oh what's frank done then Jack and Frank, Jack and Frank. Last time they had a party, Frank got so drunk he shit everywhere. He oh, fucking, good lord! Do you know what I mean? He did everything bad. Hid, he might have hid done poops and all sorts. He might have done. 
but it was Jacob, not Frank. It's Jacob that's coming up to the party. So yeah, you're right. Uh, this guy gets sent out to deal with Jacob. Um, back to the movie. The kids have now found a demon's corpse as well. Yep. And the claw cuts one of them, like the mask did in the first one. And we get a great scene where the blood drips onto the corpse, and I guess it's a backwards. I think they use a backwards melting wax head and reverse the footage of it melting so this demon comes back to life this demon's corpse it looks great you know it's a pretty decent effect I did a uh, sneaky backwards in the new short film I had to do a sneaky uh, reverse shot to uh, do an easy effect and it's great it just really works perfectly but it's, it's a nice it's such a nice, nice easy technique to reverse shot of things yeah and you can do so many things with it as well again going back yeah, to our last Going back to our last episode, there's a scene where the, one of the female vampires comes out of the coffin or goes back into the coffin as Anthony Hopkins is showing the crucifix. And the reason it looks all weird and spooky is because they did it in reverse. And that was just, a, you know, Francis Ford Coppola just knew that if he did it like that, it would look a bit jerky. And yeah, they do yeah. that kind of stuff with the ring, like with, with Samara in the ring, you know. The reason it looks so otherworldly is because a lot of those shots with her in it are reversed just because you move slightly differently when you're in reverse and it just looks great but you can do nice smooth things as well you can achieve really cool simple effects like you say you know how do we make this demon's face appear on the ground well let's get a wax demon uh, model and melt it and then reverse that and it's basically coming back to life it's um, just great another film I did watch of that actually I watched it with Jane a daytime uh, they went to school um and uh, they said, I said, do you fancy watching a film? I said, go to the old DVDs and pull one out. And they went, because they're really into their movies now. They're all going to their bedroom, always watching horror movies and stuff. And proud father here. And um, <laughs> they, um, they're like, oh, Poltergeist, I haven't seen that. So we sat and watched Poltergeist in the afternoon. It's fucking so good. But you've got that melting face scene. It's so cool. Oh, that's horrible. He starts pulling his own face off. It's not Christ. bad. I said to Jay, you're always went, yeah. Oh, okay. It's just that film was a PG yeah. When that came out in the UK. Yeah, 15 though now. I, w- I watched that with my family thinking, this is, the, this is the guy that did E.T. and Jules, you know, and, and both of those are quite terrifying as a young kid anyway. Um, Close Encounters, in fact, all of these movies are very scary. But then I sat and watched this Potter Ghost movie. I was shit myself throughout the whole film. Directed by a Texas Chainsaw Massacre director. But I said to Jazz, like, oh, that bit there is where they use human uh, skeletons because it's cheaper to just have human skeletons. And so nobody looked up and said, oh, my God. I was like, yeah. You say directed by Toby Hooper. I say directed by Steven Spielberg. Uh, I'd say influenced by uh, uh, Toby Hooper and um, co-directed by both of them, I'd say. Uh, and with a little helping of cocaine, because Toby Hooper did apparently appreciate that as well. This cocaine has come up quite a lot in this episode. This must be the 80s for you. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay, so yeah, the backwards face. We've talked about that now. Let's move forward. Um, one of the girls gets killed, and then we get this great effect, which we've seen. Are we used- still in the movie? Within the movie? Um, well, I'm about to cross over because the effect that we get now is used in The Frighteners. It's used in the, the first Nightmare on Elm Street. And this is where one of the demons comes up to the TV of Sally, who's watching the t- television in her room. And it pushes its face up to the screen and then starts stretching out the screen. And Sally starts freaking out. I did like the fact that it did actually have the demon's point of view where he looked over and see the woman sitting on the sofa watching the, 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 the program that he's in, uh, the movie he's in. I quite like that, showing that POV. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? It's a different... You haven't seen that. You see not like, ring that. You see it from the perspective of the audience mem- or perspective of the person watching the TV they're coming out of. You don't see from the demons looking at, looking at the person watching the TV. So that was quite unique for it, actually. And the way they achieved this effect apparently was well, they had this a, would have been quite unique anyway coming out of TV. They point. had a, well, they had a projector uh, with the image of the demon on it uh, onto a lycra piece of lycra or PPC, and they had someone wearing a mask behind it who just pushed their face against it. Really yeah, simple. It, it was the same as the uh, the wall scene in uh, Freddy Krueger's face. So I say, Nightmare on the Street and the Frighteners. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. 
uh, yeah, so it was used again. Uh, well, actually, this would have been used after that because I think the other first Friday, um, Nightmare on Elm Street was before this. So, yeah, looks good. And Sally is now infected. So, Sally, the host of the party, is infected. Um, she comes out to a birthday cake, though. She does. Happy birthday, Sally. Everyone sings to she her. She eventually comes out and she's a bloody demon. All that makeup time wasted. So she starts changing in front of everyone in her nails. Again, we've got the nails. Uh, and they dig into a guy's Veins arm. Veins pulsating in her arms and shit. It's really good it, effects. It's, it reminds me of Evil Dead. That's all effects. Mm -hmm. uh, she digs her nails into a guy's arm and he's the first infected. Um, and then her teeth grow and we get all the usual practical effects that we've seen in the first one. We have again another cheesy look of a demon looking at the camera again. And doing the same <sighs> thing. But, but really looking at the camera and it's like, oh, stop it, please. Yeah, I know what you mean now. Now when you say that, that that it is a bit off-putting, isn't it? It pulls, it's like, it pulls you out of it. It's like we get it. But you don't need to do the side profile head turn to the camera. It's like, in, that, you... in that Elvis movie, I was completely thrown, but my only can play completely thrown by twice by the fact that they've done this kind of mashup remix of Elvis, but it's a hip-hop track. It's like, why am I hearing hip hop beats and like bass on someone rapping on this Elvis biopic? That was really bad. That's very strange. Mm, threw me out of it totally. Hmm. Well, uh, cutting back to Sally, uh, she's fully demoned out now, and she's she basically wipes out her entire birthday party. Um, we've got the pregnant lady knocking on the door, saying, "Can you keep it down in there? I'm pregnant downstairs trying to do yoga." And Sally doesn't answer, so she goes down and she sends her husband up to knock on the door. But she says to him, but make sure you get me some cake. It's very cheeky. Yeah. Imagine someone coming around your house saying, turn down the music. Can I have some birthday cake? Give me some cake. Can you fuck it? Well, yeah, but I'm going to stick my dick in it and there you go. Fuck it, hell. Um, I was saying, sorry, it was that Beastie Boys line, uh, um, that Beastie Boys track. It's going to be that sort of party, I'm going to shove my dick in the mashed potato. <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. It's, just, it's that kind of <laughs> such a scene. It's like, what sort of party is it? What did he see for him to think that that's the great thing to do at the party next? What did he see? We have and here, why, though. Go on. Why have they got mashed potato at the party as well? I don't know. I don't know. <coughs> Uh, 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 why now are we having this Australian market scene montage? It, I understand it's the parents of the girl trying to get hold of, want to get hold of their their kid. Yeah, do you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. it's such pointless time fluff. It's just like what, what? And we're here for a period of time. It's like why is the camera panning along the street at this market? I don't care, and it doesn't really need to be like that. Yeah, you're right. There is a little bit of um, time fluff, as you say. Mm. Well, blood, but through this party of massacre, blood is now starting to drip through the air vents and through the ceilings. It's all getting a bit slimy now, isn't it? I bet it's getting a bit smelly as well. It, it reminds me a bit of Alien with the acid blood sort yeah. of dripping through, yeah. you know. Um, and there's a naked chick on a tanning bed. I watched a movie the other day and that this that was going on. There was some tripping all the way through, and there was a dude tied up or, or something, or he's in bed and he couldn't move or something, and he's coming down, and he's just watching it about to drip onto him. I can't remember what it was, though. It's quite good. Was it just you lying in bed looking at yourself in the mirror? <laughs> what, waiting for things to drip on my face? <laughs> and <it's> just... Did I put did I put the the substance on the ceiling and get down and wait for it? Like what's going on here? You you shot it up there. You were like, oh, let's see how long it takes for this to come back down. <laughs> Naked lady on the tanning bed. It drips onto her. People in the gym. They're getting they're freaking out, and we get another cokey car full of people. Yeah, punks. Punks this time around. Um, and this is where all the lights in the building get cut. I'm assuming all the power as well. We've still got the fucking dude outside waiting for the other guy to turn up, basically the car of punks, to turn up to say, you can't come in. He doesn't know what's going on upstairs. No, Jacob's still waiting outside for the cokey car of punks to say, look, I'm sorry I picked up the phone to you. I've been told, actually, that you're not actually welcome at this party. Yeah. He, doesn't, he doesn't know that it's full of demons and no lights in that, in that building now. 
and they don't want to go in. Um, we've also got a couple trapped in an elevator. Oh, yeah, those guys are stuck in the elevator as well. She's panicking. He's keeping it a bit calmer, to be honest. You're better off down there, which they do see when there's a slight gap. They realise everyone's running. Oh, he stopped, stopped. And all of a sudden, it's just like, what the fuck? Let's not forget the demon dog. Yep. We've got a demon dog with quite good dog effects. Um, uh, the demon... Like the dog opens its mouth and there's like a demon coming out of its mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, a bit of a xenomorph, like a mouth with and a mouth the thing going on. The first shot we see of that dog, that's quite good because it hasn't changed it yet. But the dog's, dog's eyes are kind of red in the distance. I was like, how'd they do that? And that looked really good. Uh, by the way, Tony has also stopped the gym. Stop, everybody! Because the lights are gone out. You can't keep working out in the goddamn dark. Yeah. But some people do. And he's like, do what you want to do. And he, he actually lets one or two people who... Want to carry on working out, even though there's no lights in there. Oh, go on then. Carry on. Do your weights. Um, yeah, and this is my next line here written. It says, Jim, Massacre, and Hank, or Tony as you like to call him, fights back against the demons. He gets his muscle squad. He does. Before, very, very quickly, getting back to the dog, that's quite gross when we have that, that dog coming out the jaws of the mouth, very Company of the Wolves uh, uh, type effect. It's really quite yucky. It's. I liked it because, it, like I said, it reminded oh, me a bit of the animal. Sarah also did a bit of a ooh. We both did a ooh. It's quite good, though. It shows that it, the yeah, demons can affect it's good, animals It's good effects, well. but it's just a bit like, ooh. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It affects animals as well, yeah. It's pretty cool. Um... Hank leads his army of muscle boys and says, let's get out of here. And they're, they're just like shoulder ramming this one door over and over and over. So it's locked. Oh just my God. Don't need to keep doing that. I love the fact that they're just like, just like, uh, okay, just keep, keep keep using our muscle, just keep running here and then getting like ob- objects which are just, just throwing a chair at, at something isn't going to actually open the doors. You need the physics of how the door is going to open. Where else do you need to hit that to get the point where or, it needs to hit? Not a chair from a distance, it bounces off it. It's the, something sharp. So they're like all just the picking up various objects and just randomly throwing them at the door. It's like, what are you doing? It's hilarious. There's way too much energy being used up here for no reason. Well, Hank says, I tell you what, we need to get down to the underground car park. So they all head down to the underground car park. Him and a, him and a fellow muscle dude, they, they fight off a couple of the old demons. Oh, yeah. They, you know, they throw get them to around. the garage. They get to the underground car park. and Dude, dude fix up the fire extinguisher, but they can't read the instructions. Yo, this is a bit. Yo, oh, yeah. yo muscle, I got no brain, kid. He says, use the fire extinguisher. How do you work it? It's like, uh, so just, just read the ins- So they're trying to get through another door now. Yeah. Uh, well, we cut away from this for a little bit. No, no, we don't. No, we don't. We get we a bit where the woman thinks, I know what I'm going to do. I'll drive the car through it. So oh, she reverse that drive through it. And as you drive through it, the three people who are standing next to the door are now cardboard cutouts. And they're <laughs> at the right. There's these three full-size cardboard cutouts standing there where they were standing before as the car goes in. And I was like, that is amazing. That's so cool. At the side there's, of the window, you can see them. It's fucking there's brilliant. nothing like... Spotting, spotting cardboard cutouts or a good dummy. Yeah. Especially when that, that dummy's flying flying off, off a wall. Flying yeah. off a, a, a roof, yeah. Off a roof. Does, I think that might even happen in this. Yeah, but probably. There's, I think there's a good dummy shot in this. But I love yeah, the cardboard cutouts because it's HD copy. I'm just like, that's amazing. Yeah, I love, do love seeing a good cardboard cutout. Uh, well, we cut away from this uh, underground fight for a little bit because... Um, a little boy. The little boy, he's in, and he's in his bunk bed, and he's very scared. And there's some demons coming up the stairs to get him. So he hides in a... I think it's an air vent he hides in, or a closet, or a cupboard. I think it's a closet. Um, so he's in there, sort of hiding away. He comes out the closet in a bit. I mean, we've all come out the, come out the closet. Uh, there's a fire in the car park. We're cutting back to it now. So I, there's, there's chaos down there. These muscle men are trying to fight demons by punching a wall so they get out of the building it's that which isn't working and now there's fire down there there's cars piling up the security guard from before has now actually died from trying to help the guys stuck in the lift or cokehead from before and now concierge person he dies trying to get them out doesn't he 
I, how does he die? Is he? Get... He's there during a dirt and a demon attacks him, and then he's dead there. So then he wakes right. up and grabs her hair because he's already a demon with his hand in the elevator. Oh yes, of course. It's a shame he died so. I thought he was going to live a bit longer, to be honest. But it's a trick because you know he he did so he lasted so much longer in the first film. You I guess thought he was in the first one as well. Yeah, it was just probably a favour in this one. Yeah, give him a can of actual coke. We got somersault and demons. They they somersault over the fire. That's incredible. Gymnastic Jackie Chan star demons uh, jumping over fire. Are we now at the circus? <laughs> um. <laughs> The little boy parents are heading home for him. Again, we, we, keep, we keep. why do we keep cutting back to the parents? I'm worried about him. He's not answering the phone. It's not like they're really that relevant, these people, getting it? It's not like they have some massive thing to do with the plot of the story. If you're that worried about your son, why Don't have you left him? leave him alone. Yeah, yeah. fuck's You've sake. You've left him in a building. That's, I think, I think there's something, some parental thing going on here. What's uh, trying to say, I don't know. Tony's been killing a few more people. Now he's just jumped on top of the car and he's telling everybody, you got to weaponize. He does. He's very he's sweaty and he's, he's very sweaty and he's very intense. <laughs> He's been doing a lot of cocaine in that gym. He's done a lot of coke, and now he's like going, right, I am ready. <laughs> to weaponize. He, I reckon one day he was off to his coke dealer to get his usual supply, got home by himself, and was like, right, I'm doing a big old fucking hit. He bumped a load of coke up his nostrils, and then he was like, if demons come out, I'm going to jump on a car, sweaty and intense, and say, weaponize, everybody! <laughs> and just get everybody with weapons so we can take on demons. That's what I'm going to do. That's what he came up with in his coke riddled mind well the the young boy's parents do come into it now because they do get into a car crash um yeah brilliant great now you've got in a car crash don't uh, the moral of the story don't go out and have a good time stay in with your kid yep otherwise you'll end up demon, dead building for the demons your kid's a demon and you've crashed and the the boy is now transforming into a demon is it the same boy that's transformed into a demon, or is it a different demon boy? Um, just very quickly, the car that crashes, it was the car which was the dude was waiting for. It was the punks with the, the parents, wasn't it? Yeah, the coke um, car. Yeah, the kid, the demon. He does is I don't know if it's because I watched Lost Boys the other day, but it did remind me of uh, the little kid in Lost Boys. Eddie Munster. Did he, did he, an attack on the Eddie Munster. Uh, yeah, he's pretty creepy. He's played by a dwarf. Or a little person, uh, rather than an actual child. There is and a... It, sorry. It does make it creepier because you can tell it's a grown man. Uh, well, I say grown. It's, he's not grown because he's a little person, but you can tell it's, it's an adult. Um, oh, I didn't, I didn't actually know that. As, a, as a, a child demon. I, 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 Very I creepy. Attention. Okay. There is also a character. I don't know, I don't know whereabouts, but my note is just double leather, uh, double leather is a thing as it is, but then to have black lace-up shoes as well, that's a thing. Double leather. Double denim is one thing, but double, double leather. leather. Oof. What about double suede? This is what Elvis did for his comeback. He wore double leather. Yeah. I've, have you ever worn leather trousers? No, I haven't actually. Have you? No, I can only imagine how hot it might be. In them. I was around my friend's house what, years ago and his parents were away and we, uh, with like, some other people. And um, I think he came, he came back downstairs in his mum's leather trousers. <laughs> Why? Because we were pissed. Oh, okay, fair enough. It's just funny, isn't it? Yeah, I once dressed up as a woman. I dressed a woman once, and I found it quite, quite uh, liberating. I was horrified. <laughs> I was horrified. I, I, well, I was just in shock as how hard it was just to go to the toilet. I had all my tights and everything, and just, I blimey. me. The worst thing was, and I'm not scared to admit this, our listeners have been listening to this podcast for over eight years. <clears throat> I was on my own at the time. Did you dress <laughs> and, as a uh, woman by yourself? Is that what you're telling well, me? Well, what happened was... I went to a fancy dress party. What happened was, this is a long time ago. Uh, well, I went I went to the fancy dress party uh, as Buffy once, but that was a different time. Uh, the other time I dressed in drag, if you will, was I uh, my girlfriend at the time was staying over my house. My parents were on holiday away, and I said to her, I'll, I'll do all your laundry for you while you're at work. It's fine, I'll, and I'll go out and make dinner. So I was doing her laundry for her, and as it was all coming out, the tumble dry, nice and dry, I thought, I've never worn a skirt. I'll pop that on. All right, now that's on. I wonder what it's like to wear the blouse. I'll try that as well. And I ended up putting on, like, most of her clean clothes. And and then I sort of wandered into the, 
You were cleaning room. someone's clothes and you put them on, and they were there. Uh, yeah. I don't know why I'm telling this story, really. And then I walked into Does the living room. Does anybody know of this? I don't think so. No, they do now. <laughs> oh, I love it, though. I want to know what's going on. I love the fact that you should just tell us what's going to happen. What's going on next? So, and I walked into the... Okay, what happens next? <laughs> it wasn't like you went, oh, that's what it looks like. I'll take him off again. It was like, then I walked into the... Okay. Well, I, w- I walked into the living room in... Like a cardigan, a blouse, and a skirt. Just as a woman, yeah. And I saw myself... You can just say it, speed it up. Say it as it is, my friend. Say it as it is. <laughs> Come on, we're all friends here. And I walked into the living room, and I saw myself in the mirror, and I just thought, you I... look ridiculous. Oh, you didn't say it, I would do myself. I know, I, I thought, you, you've got a beard, you look ridiculous. Did you, uh, uh, because you thought when you looked in that mirror, you weren't going to look ridiculous. Go, I don't know That's a pretty say. good look. I don't know what I was going to say. Love, were you disappointed in the fact that you look I ridiculous? Was, I was gutted, I was really gutted. Because you thought you were going to look good. <laughs> Women in beards just, well, beards and beards and dresses just, I don't know, they don't work. It's no, like me, no. I would dress as a woman so I could, but the beard thing just throws it, totally. I never expected to tell that story while we reviewed Demons 2. I love after all this time, we're still learning things. <laughs> about each other, yeah. about myself. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, back to that movie from the 80s we're reviewing after your transvestite story. Go on. So the, the little boy starts chasing the pregnant lady around, the little demon boy chasing all over the place. And then a demon bursts out of him as well. A weird little like one of the ghoulies isn't it? Yeah, it's just demons everywhere in this one. And they're popping out little puppet effects. Like <laughs> That kid though, is laying there. Oh, so you said as a grown up. I did it. A, a small, yeah, it a small a, adult. Yeah. That's good because I'd put hey, that kid must be fucking well traumatized by now. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a um a little person. That, that would... makes sense because the amount of makeup, how long it takes, you get the kid on the same way. Right, that's him off again. Put take the makeup off. He's got to go. So yeah. yeah. Um, the pregnant lady hides in a closet, um, but she she manages to burst out, uh, and uh the demon gets oh the demon gets locked in the elevator shaft doesn't it now it climbs down so it all moves very quickly unlike the first one it kind of is a bit too rapid because it's just like you can't keep up with what's happening shaft shaft i don't know why i said it like that (laughs) can you dig it (laughs) shaft shaft um yeah the demons get trapped in the wall uh it's just speeding along now. The husband arrives back. He finishes off another demon by stabbing it. The battle in the car park continues. Well, much like the helicopter, rather than that, this time, we just get like a multi-car pile-up in the underground car park. Mm. All these cars just start flying. They must have said to Lamberto, right, we've got 15 stunt cars. Uh, how many do you want? All of them. Okay. But it's an underground car park. There's only certain speed cars can build up to. And yeah, it's fine. I want you to just smash them, crash them, and fly them all over the place. I want this to be really dramatic. All right, yeah, great, whatever. It's like the helicopter. Yeah, there's just so much shit going on. It's really hard to keep up. Um, the demons all start running away from the fire, and we do get our last four survivors who well, climb down the building. We have had Tony, though. Hank. Hank, well, if you want to say Hank, funny enough, Hank rhymes with Frank and Yank, because his Frank and Beans are yanked off. Hank's Ooh. Frank and Beans are yanked. Oh, they are, aren't they? Yank and Frank, Hank had a f- Yank and Frank. Hankenstein. Hankenstein, Frankenstein, Yankenstein. So, yeah, he is, unfortunately, brown bread. He is brown bread. And we have got the last four survivors now who decide... I think we'll climb down the building. And we get this amazing shot now where a female demon, I don't know if it's Sally, I can't remember, kind of just jumps down the rope that they're abseiling down and starts flying towards them. It's all very real stunt as well. It looks amazing. It's very Bruce Campbell-like now, isn't it? This main guy, he turns a bit hero-like, like the first one. Yeah, it's always a bit of a sort of nerd that turns into a bit of a Rambo by the end of it. Yeah. 
Well, again, you think this is going to end now. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, they go. They break into a TV station. It's a bit like They Live now. They break into a TV station that's showing the, the horror film. Or the end of Howling. Or the end of Howling. What were the female gizmos? That is just... Who I, thought that was a good idea? I don't understand. Let's have the uh, cute little vam- a cute werewolf at the end. Why do we want a cute werewolf after this horror movie we just played? That's bizarre. They shouldn't have shown any of that. <laughs> no, just very briefly, just they should have... Finish it. They should have maybe shown her eyes change, or maybe some fangs, <laughs> and then just shown the reaction of people in the studio, and then cut to credits. That's all you needed. I yeah. didn't need to see that little... It was like an Ewok. It puts me off the film, it does that, at the end. Great movie, just that weird shot at the end. Um, yes, so she, go, she goes into labour, the pregnant woman, in the studio, the TV studio, and the baby is born. It's a boy. But a demon comes in. Yep. And then... He's the, OG, he's the OG demon from the get-go. Is it Sally? Yeah. So, so how, is that, how is she still going so well? Yeah, I don't understand. And she's blind as well, isn't she, by the looks of it? Probably. But she falls down and just dies. Yeah, no, the dude holding the baby will shout, baby shouts, she, she, she's blind. That's so right. don't shout she's blind. She'll hear you and come to you. Because they hide from her and she's Signal, obviously... She can't see. She's going. She's like a T Rex. She's going by by sound. I know. So she's blind. Well, don't shout it then. I'm over here behind the <laughs> bookshelf. Exactly. Holding the baby. So I've actually only got one arm spare. The baby's crying now. I hope it doesn't hear the baby crying. Reminds me of that front cover of Hard Boiled. Oh my god, that film is so good. Mm. My favourite scene in Hard Boiled is when he's got he's holding the baby and there's a little fire just below him and then the baby pisses and puts out the fire <laughs> and he's still shooting people while this is happening because <laughs> he's Chow Yun Fat and Chow Yun Fat never stops shooting yeah great movie um yeah Sally falls down and dies and yeah great they leave the building in the daylight and that's the end <laughs> yeah. like, I'm so sorry yeah. listeners it sounds like we've not bothered to do the end of it but that is literally the end it goes from a, a Maltese pop, pop, car pile up fire abseiling fights demon children uh, to suddenly a woman having a baby hiding around the corner from a blind demon who falls to the ground and dies and they just leave and it's daylight pretty much yeah, um, I didn't like this one as much as the first one, and I pr- I don't know if I would recommend it. I'd recommend it if you've seen the first one, you want more of the same. Yeah, if you if you like, yeah, agreed. If you like the first one, definitely watch this Com- one. Complete it not yourself, my friend. Yeah, you do that. Uh, and and they do tie together nicely. A bit like a bit, and I mentioned it like earlier. A bit like the Blair Witch, because there's that whole kind of like the second one could potentially have taken place in a world where the first one was a film. Yeah. Um. And you're never quite sure if the demon myth is real in this film or if it's just in the film that they're watching on TV. And I quite like that. I still like the practical effects. But yeah, it's just not... It's a great idea, a building full of demons, uh, you know, being infected for the TV. It's kind of like an early ring. Um, it's like Shivers. It's some of these movies we've talked about. But it just, I just feel like they don't quite execute it and I do feel like Lamberto Barba both of these films as much as I love the ending of the first one but I do feel like he's not very good at wrapping up a film the last act is always a bit like I've got all these ideas for act one and act two what about act three I'm not quite sure what to do let's can we get a helicopter yeah yeah but he doesn't maybe, know how to end it maybe you have Dario <coughs> and, the, and the editor in the studio you might be able to like a uh, uh, Chop it down a bit, chop it higher, more condensed. I felt that with both the films, I felt that like they dragged on a bit, to be honest. Um, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's fun. The way we talk about it then, like the stuff that's in it, it's fun. If you're basically, though, we were like teenagers when we probably saw these sort of films. We wanted nonsense, we didn't care about the story, we wanted yeah, to see people being killed exactly in ridiculous it. ways. 
They're not um, Oscar-winning. They're not mature movies in any yeah, sense. They're, they're not Oscar-winning serious films where there's a plot that actually right. you care about. It, it, you if you're watching get... a movie called Demons, that's what you're getting. You, go, you want to go from one kill to the next kill to the next kill to the next effect to the next effect. And that's what you get with these films. Yeah. There's lots of kills. There's a lot know. of good gore in it. So if you if you haven't seen it and you haven't seen the first one, you could go in to watch it. And I'm going to recommend it for the people who like their 80s horror or their Italian gore. I wouldn't even say these two films are scary, really. I'd say they're just... No, that's a they're, they're, Yeah, just gory. Yeah. Um... Well, but I, 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 I give this a thumbs up, but that's more nostalgia. Uh, but I, I'd I, don't, say, I don't think I can, I, I, only if you're completist, I think. But I'd say if you haven't seen it... Maybe. Don't, don't go out of your way. I would say actually don't go out of your way. The, har- the hardest thing nowadays, we're having new films out all the time. Mm. So that's the problem nowadays. Back in the day, it wasn't so much so might have recommended this if it's the 90s um sarah sarah took one for the team and watched demons free and told me yeah, not, I've seen not it. to watch it and i have i have i saw it once i don't remember it i've seen um it's youtube i think three four i've seen there's about five or six of them but a lot of them aren't demons movies they've just been called demons five something something um just to try and tie them in uh it's yeah. demons three the church Oh, right. I oh, know that's yoga. Oh, the yoga. So Demons 4 is the church. Oh, okay. And then there's another one about a woman, I think, being possessed, and that's... But didn't Dario Argento do a movie called The Church? Um, I feel like. Maybe. Maybe, but maybe. I think, I think, I think, in, some, possibly, I think I in some regions it's called Demons 4. Yeah, yeah, no, it's probably it's the same thing. Muddled. But, um, yeah, I would say um, really only bother with the first one, really, unless you are a completist. But they're fun. They are what they are. Yeah, they are what they are, absolutely. Um, well, and then, yeah, there we go. So let's take a little step away and come back and have a little outro, shall we? Uh, I was just checking the church. Writer by Dario Argento. Yeah, so I am thinking of that. Mm. The church. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Before we do the outro, let me just... Just so our guys who are... Completists, I can tell you the. I was um, going to actually say that just to just, just mention demon, the film. Yeah, may as well. Um, Demons franchise. It's very convoluted, apparently. Well, I can sit here. Demons Free, uh, I think. I guess the church is going into. Oh, Demons, Demons Free the Ogre, and you've got Demon, Demonoli. Demoni Free. And then you've got Black Demons, you've got the Sect, the Mask of Satan. Uh, so the problem is, all of these movies in some countries have someone just puts Demons 5 in mm. front of the name of it yeah. even even Dalamote Dalamore Cemetery Man is classed in some countries as a Demons film Yeah. so it is very convoluted I think really there's only probably three or four real ones in the series but yeah. I, I don't even think three and four are part of the series really I think they're just movies that happen to have demons in them and they thought well we'll cash in on those Lamberto Bava movies that seem to have done really well it's all it's the same with um, the zombie films zombie movies yeah it's zombie just, free and zombie whatever yeah. I do I do like all that I do like how it all you know, ties in and people trying to make money in the 80s attaching themselves to a franchise it's what it is isn't it really it's fun it's silly Indeed. Um, it, was, well, it was a bit of Wild West back in the day with filmmaking and VHS yeah. boom, VHS market. Right, let's get out of here and come out for the, uh, the outro, isn't it? It is, sadly. Yeah. All right. All right, nice one. And we're back again, ladies and gentlemen, non people, aliens, ghosts, spirits, demons, poltergeists, werewolves, and, and zombies. And Tony, the gym guy. Um, hope you've enjoyed yourself. Um, it's nice to be recording again with you, Daniel. It is a bit, a bit cooler. I'm glad we, like, like we said earlier, we couldn't be recorded I, in the I heat. I think so. the executive decision last time to cut from recording <laughs> made fucking sense. Indeed. Mm. Indeed. Um, so next time, what have we got for the peoples? So uh, episode 124. We're, we're keeping it nice and hot and holiday themed, and we're doing the original Friday the 13th. Crazy, we've not done it. And while we're out in the woods, let's do some sleepaway camp. Yeah. So, I'm not going to say my opinions of that film just yet. 
So we um, we're gonna get all sort of hot and sweaty in a tent together. Yes, we are. Yeah. So that's that one. So looking forward to that. Episode 125 is another patron special. It is. It is. So um, patron picks, and it's R. J. McCready, and he's picked a Journey to the Center of the Earth. Uh, no, no, he hasn't. He's picked. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, he's picked um, the land that time forgot. Okay. And yeah, uh, Bat- uh, Warlords of Atlantis. Is the other one. I do know. I forgot that then for a second. I, I know the uh, the former. I uh, do not know the latter. Um, cool. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, ladies and gents. This is again. We'll be doing our Patreon picks. Is um, um, if you are a patron of ours. You will get eventually. It will come round to you. Uh, you will get your chance to give us films to review. Um, so do start thinking, Patreon people, of the movies because at some point we will be asking you. Yeah, it's first come first serve, really. But if you we haven't heard from you, I'm going to start messaging people who haven't got back to us who are patrons to well, say, "Oi, give us some films." Well, eventually, once we've gone through <clears> the patrons, um, unless new patrons come on board, we will have then a system which we yeah. will keep out of that and um, i'm glad uh, you are good at, with memories and things dan and you will know and jot down the order of uh, how it is yes indeed and i should imagine we'll probably have at least one werewolf film when jamie j Sammons comes to pick her i know films. i, I um, this, that's quite I, good this is the thing i do quite enjoy this whole new idea um because it's quite fun to check out films I'm not really going to be checking out. I really enjoyed watching Dracula. Oh, man, Dracula was just phenomenal, wasn't it? So... And that was our last episode. That was the patron pit, Matthew. Interesting, but yes, as I had to apologise last time, um, um, we may start talking about penises and vaginas. We do sometimes. uh, So don't, 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 if it's a movie you don't want us to talk that about, then, you know, sorry. So that's 125, and then that means uh, episode 126. I can now reveal will be, Ooh. and this has been a long time coming because he he's a mascot <laughs> mascot of the show, as we know, Nicholas Cage special. We are covering Mandy and Color Out of Space. Yeah, a bit of a uh, bit of a colourful uh, Nick Cage session. Yeah, it was a bit of an HP Cage. Lovecraft, HP Lovecraft, Nicholas Cage. Mad, crazy, acid, LSD vibes going on. Yeah, um, the new short we're doing, Take Three, basically the colour of scheme towards the end is very... Uh, what's, that's, actually, I'm giving away some things there. I mean, but but, but we, we're very much in the colour out of space type, type world. So that's the next three episodes, Friday the 13th, camp, The Sleepaway Camp, the patron picks from RJ McCready, followed by a Nicolas Cage special, Mandy, and Colour Out of Space. Good things coming. I, I really just don't like that. The, the mum and the child together on the sofa. Ooh, it's very upsetting. I very really upsetting. don't like that bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to well, struggle we can talk with that, about that. We will talk about that then. Mm. Um, so that's that really. So anything else you wanted to add while we're here? Not really. Thank you very much <clears> for <throat> listening to us. I know you're going to do all the outro stuff, but... Um, massively thank you um do give us some reviews and um um share us around yeah if you listen to us on spotify share me and dan around <laughs> if you listen to us on spotify you can rate us on there and you can review us anywhere you listen to podcasts most places i think itunes or whatever it's called now apple pods apple cast don't know what it's called but you can do it if you can do it put your back into it bomb bomb that's what i'm saying <clears throat> thank you thank you for listening to us and that coming on this crazy journey well we'll do the serious bit of admin before we get all silly and give each other hugs and kisses goodbye so as always we are the podcast on wanted hill we are a proud member of legion podcasts you can find out about more about them on legionpodcast.com as well as all the other shows that are on the network there's lots of shows for you to get your teeth into uh mostly horror but there was a few other bits and bobs on there uh, legion podcast also has a facebook page just search Legion Podcasts. Same with us. And it's where you'll find us most active. The podcast on Haunted Hill page. Um, you can interact with Gavin and I on there. And all of our listeners, supporters, patrons, and everybody else. It is a proper little family. It's been going almost nine years now. And, you know, we've all made good friends on there. And, uh, yeah, come join us. Come and join in the fun. Join us, as they say. Join us. 
Um, other Johnny's places. In the fun. <clears throat> I can't make that sound creepy. You can. How can you say? Can, how can you make the word fun creepy? You can say play with us forever and ever and yeah, ever. Yeah, I guess. Uh, wherever you listen to us now is how you can continue to listen to us but we're available in most places like Apple Podcast Addict Podbean YouTube even Spotify um, any of those places really you can chat to us at, on Twitter at Haunted Podcast we're on Instagram uh, that's the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta and if you want to find out more about our production company <clears throat> we've talked about the new short that's uh, being submitted in the next few days it's a to festival the so it's for the public <clears throat> a little bit a little bit longer but we yeah it will be on youtube at some point so to find out more about that short as well as the other shorts and features and other podcasts and comic books that we've produced just go to deadbolfilms.com and um, if you <clears throat> are thinking oh, i'd love to actually watch that sounds quite good the next time we're crowdfunding for the short films the people who crowd um uh, fund us do get to see the movie uh, at the same time the festivals are getting it submitted and because they've they've funded us so do bear that in mind if you if you like oh, i'd like to see that film I'm not trying to say oh give us money but you know i'm just saying that's how you can yep. see it if you want to otherwise it does take a while doing the whole festival thing and you know we, it goes out of our hands a little bit so. and there's usually tears as well when we do them isn't there so different uh different levels and tears <laughs> we made me not cry. tears in with crying <laughs> Yeah. There is sometimes yeah. there's tears though. As yeah, well. there is bits and bobs. Uh, this time there wasn't so much actually. We did it on a we did this on the budget of two hundred. It's fantastic. Uh, which is our cheapest budget, but funny enough, it looks really good. <laughs> it's like well, how does that look so good for so cheap? <laughs> we've been doing this for about uh, ten or I just think, over ten years now. So I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. And we've got a different team now. We've got like new people on board. Quite so. quite a solid little team. Yeah. Um, that's deadbotfilms.com guys uh, also YouTube channel of Deadbot Films um, some of those shorts and features are on there as well as uh, live World of the Strange with Gav and I running around graveyards and being silly we do need to do a new one we do I'd love to we just need to get together that's all well um, I, 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 I would say another cemetery and I'll just come over to Bristol well there's one right by my house I know and I think that's what we should probably do but trouble is though being in your bloody city it's either a ghost or a cracker who wants to mug us so you know <laughs> <laughs> it's scary regardless <laughs> Deadbolt Films is also on Instagram. It's just Deadbolt Films. And we're on Twitter at Deadbolt Films. And finally, um, thank you very, very much to our patrons. Thank you. Um, always. Always thank you so much. We, we You really, you know, help us. Yes. Every show is because of you guys, really. Obviously, all of our listeners, but you guys yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, you. you know, actually supporting in the way that you do. If you want to become a patron you don't have to do it you get a free t-shirt but you get a free t-shirt you get to pick two films for us to review um and you get a shout out at the end of every episode um then just go to patreon and just type in the podcast on haunted hill there's usually a link with the episode when we drop the episodes as well and, and as always we do some sneaky stuff as well don't we sneaky little episodes here and there yeah occasionally we drop not as many as we would have would like bits. but I recently, well, I say recently, a year ago, had twins, and it's just a bit harder to get the content out that we'd like. But it's there, and we again another I've reason been we trying appreciate to put out you guys. little bits, little videos, and things, little reviews and stuff, little things. But some of those, I, I said to you, I can't upload that one with you and the Willy. I, it's not suitable. Oh, that's for the OnlyFans, isn't it? Oh, you, you sent me the wrong file. Podcast on the Haunted Hill on OnlyFans. Yeah. Okay. Imagine that if we were on that. <laughs> Don't know what we'd be doing. Well, switching back to the patrons. Because <laughs> we don't have an OnlyFans. We don't have an OnlyFans. Thank you very much to everybody who is a patron. And that is Don Collier, Matthew Godley, Jamie Jenkins, Kevin S. Fife, Sarah Kay, Rachel, RJ McCready, and Lex Boo. Guys, thank you so much. Big kiss to all of you. Yes, um, and, and when we have our little hiatuses, always thanks for uh, still supporting. Yeah, we continuing to are pay. always coming back, even if it's a little bit of a gap. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That is very true. And when that happens, though, we do try and put out a little bit of exclusive Patreon stuff just to keep tie you over. Yeah, and still every Friday, uh, patrons are still getting our old episodes drop on every freaky Friday. I think we're up to about episode 40 now, so about the last 40 oh, weeks. Cool, man. Um, the sound level should be getting all right now, the sound quality. 
the the most recent one I dropped last Friday was Halloween 2016. Okay. Uh, where we did the live Ouija board, Gav. Oh, hilarious! So that I dropped that one last Friday. So uh, yeah, every Friday, if you're a patron, eventually that will catch back up around, obviously, but not for many years because we've got a lot of episodes out now. Um, so it's going to take a while. But yeah, that's everything. That was episode 123. Easiest one, two, three. A, B, C, demons, baby, you love me now. <laughs> uh, we love demons. Demons two is. I'm a bit of a nostalgia for it, but it's yeah. But it's fun to chat about those two, so that was cool. Enjoyed it. So next time we're going down to the woods, we're doing a bit of camping. If you go down in the woods today, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> kill, kill, kill. <laughs> kill, kill. Although Jason's not in the first one, as we know. Spoiler. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's a 45-year-old film. Deal with it. <laughs> the, amount, the amount of people, uh, kids that went and watched Scream, then found out from that. They went back to watch the first one. They went, it? oh, I knew that already from Scream. Like, like Jay the other day is like, oh, have you got, had a go at me because I got rid of the DVD even though I said the movie's all right. I said, I don't have the room to keep every movie I think is all right, Jay. Uh, they had a go at me because I got rid of Orphan. Um, oh, God. Um, so um, they watched it. Got they got a copy and they watched it. And um, but I was like, yeah, this, the twist is great. And they're like, yeah, I already know. And I was like, I'm not gonna say just in case you haven't seen it. I was like, oh, well, that's really kind of taken away a lot of the fun of that film. I know. I don't know why people. Uh, whenever a new Marvel film comes out, my brother always googles what the end credit scenes are and right. who who the cameos are right. and then and then well, when then i say to it. well then i say to him well i went to watch spider-man or doctor strange 2 and he's like yeah i've already i already know all the twists and i think i don't get i i like to be in the cinema when you know one of the characters appears like like when when i was watching ragnarok which you've seen and the hulk suddenly appeared and i was like what this is amazing yeah you know? i knew only because i had the dvd case <laughs> yeah, well, it, yeah, obviously, but yeah. at the time it was sort of yeah, yeah, you know, and that, that not just Marvel films. I love it, love it when I'm surprised in a film, you know. Yeah, but some people like to, you know, look these things up. So that's that's cool. It's up to it's up to you. However, you want to watch films, but we like to watch films and then talk about them. So should we stop talking though so let's stop talking though and let's say it's a big good night from god damn it she's a friend of mine Tony the Pimp <laughs> it's good night from weaponize yourselves come on <laughs> is it just going to be loads of Tonys no because it's a good night from pick up every dance gram of my cocaine I right now I, I haven't got any more to give I'm going to say good night from Bill Murray how's that oh Bill he's waving hi Bill his Uber is going to be here in a minute actually um, and it's good night from you and it's a good night from you and me and us. And it's One, two, three. Me. And it's a good night from us. Stay safe, people. Lock those windows and doors. Shut that back door. And and don't forget. <laughs> and don't forget. <laughs> if it gets hot. That wasn't an anal passage joke. <laughs> anal passage. Don't forget, guys. If it gets hot, you can walk around your house in next to nothing. It's your house. Just make sure. It is your shut. house. Yeah. Make sure you're not walking around my house naked, please. <laughs> I told you about that, RJB Creedy. Indeed. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon. <laughs>